This podcast is a production of Unfiltered Studios. If you would like to know more about joining Unfiltered Studios, please visit our website at unfpod.com for more information. Tell me what you know of James Bond. He's a double O and a wild one. Charming, sophisticated secret agent. Who is also licensed to kill? You noticed. time, does it? What's the worst dare anyone's done? I don't know. Uh, the statute of limitations might still be active. Oh, okay. Well, I, I, I didn't mean to Why is that. He not to disclose I can rework that. that. I just, I just mean in general. Like I, every once in a while, I would be dared to watch a bad movie, and I was just like, oh. And I always got pissed because the people who dared me would never follow up on their end. So where I just said, you know what? I'm fucking done. I value my time. I'm not. I'm not gonna watch this bad movie. You're not gonna watch the other piece of shit with me. <laughs> true, true story for another guest. I swam across the Hudson River naked in February. So, oh Jesus! Well, I mean, <laughs> that's quite the feat there. I mean, I don't know why you would want to, but I mean, uh, I was in an all-girls school when they they dared me. So, you know, I think you won the yeah. dare contest. <laughs> <laughs> I hope the water wasn't this point, You realized <laughs> shrink might have been embarrassing. <laughs> that, rem- that reminds me of my favorite Fireside Sanchez. Theater. Sorry, go ahead. <laughs> uh, my favorite Fireside Theater quip was uh, We're going to Greece and swim the English Channel. <laughs> <laughs> and swim. <laughs> the, the timing was better than mine. Nice. <laughs> That's a good one. That's great. I think it's from. Uh, ooh, one, oh. Don't crush that dwarf. Oh, of course, that dwarf hand me the pliers. Yeah. Oh my god. Yeah. <laughs> Fantastic. Meanwhile. <laughs> anyway. Meanwhile, back at the Hall of Justice. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and the super friends will save the day again. Did Ted Knight? He he narrated those. Uh, did he do any voices of any of the characters? Yeah, know. he did the. He did the Joker, and I think he did the Flash the first season when the Flash showed up. Sweet. Because all I remember is him doing that first season, Super Friends, and then when they came back, I think like two years later, it was William Wyndham who was doing the, um, I think that's the guy's name, who was doing that, you know, the world's greatest superheroes, you know. Right. um, Okay. Hey, well, I think he did earlier before Super Friends. I think he voiced some of those too. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, those DC character ones. Anyway, we're okay. talking about James Bond. I don't. Know. Uh, I don't. I don't know how we're talking about James Bond. There's so much to it. Um, so 
Yeah. You're at the Hall of Justice. Yeah, no. We're talking about uh, the guy who was kind of more superhero than an actual superhero. We are talking, we're just, we figured we'd revisit James Bond for the billionth time, but this time just like do our personal rankings of the saga, you know, and just put your five stars in one corner and obviously the one stars in another. But we got some special exclusive guests. We got Gamer himself and Comic Crusaders member. We got Nim. Welcome. Hey, what's going on, everybody? Uh, very hey. happy to be here. So, welcome. And then first there's the be sky, here. and then there's James Bond because he can <laughs> definitely fly like an eagle. <laughs> And we got Philip B. from the Bond, only Bond podcast. Right. Thank you. Appreciate <laughs> we, being on. We had to have an expert on here who loved <laughs> And I promise we'll try and have you on for the Dirty Harry you know, ranking whenever the hell we... Oh, uh, yeah, uh, I'd love that. Uh, Dirty, uh, well, <laughs> Charles Bronson one, too, would be good. Yeah. Oh, totally. We could totally do a yeah. Death Wish kind of thing. Just something mm -hmm. that's a throwback to all these Reagan-era type conservative fever dream uh. <laughs> right and then yeah. somehow the hero is actually kind of a nice progressive guy underneath all this just <laughs> muddled bizarre narratives and bad guys hey, i'm gonna bad. blow your brains out <laughs> yeah that was pretty I'm good going to kill limit yeah um it's a, a unique Jesus. experience those films for sure oh, they're not gonna man. be made um, like that again yeah I, i'm not sure how to feel right now i am oh my god that's awesome <laughs> Here at the Hall of Justice, we got Tom and JJ. Hi, everybody. I'm Droopy. My name's Bond. <laughs> Droopy's Bond. <laughs> My name is Bond. My name is Bond. James Bond. Who would claim to be that who is not? <laughs> <laughs> Remember what we talked about now? Oh, bloody hell. Um, Don't make me bring up Tobek's mother again. Yeah. <laughs> 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 no, shakery, dickery, duck, your mother's a whore. <laughs> I've heard that Jack Nicholson knew that Albert Brooks actually was very close second uh, for supporting actor that year when Connery got it for the Untouchables. Yeah, oh, wow. yeah, and arguably, arguably a better part too. I thought he did a better job. Oh yeah, that would have been wild. Uh, uh, a fan of the Scotsman pretending to be a British uh, agent. We got Mike Insing in the house. <laughs> hey, and. Back at the studio and ready to get through some a chaotic franchise. Gil Palmer is also here. Oh, <laughs> yeah! <Hello. laughs> so before we like get the started, Star Trek collection in the back there. So. I just <laughs> wanted to pay respect to the <laughs> cyber <laughs> eyes, cyber enhanced. Wait, <laughs> um, the final frontier. These are the voyages of me and Trebek's mother. <laughs> and there is actually an awesome uh, meme I have that makes it look like Pierce Brosnan is Captain Kirk. Uh, you and I had a mutual friend. Question before we get into this: uh, score preference, John Barry or David Arnold? John Barry. <laughs> okay. It has to be John, John Barry. Barry. Yeah, I mean, the trumpets yeah. are a little stronger with there. Bo, 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 with also, also with a nod to Moby, who did a. Version of James Bond theme. I, that's the theme of this episode. Yeah, I, I love that theme. Yes. <laughs> and Hans Zimmer. Hans Zimmer did a good job, but he's no John Barry. I'm sorry. John yeah. Barry, yep. that that franchise lives and dies with John Barry's opening. The, mm -hmm. the, the, the score that he made, you know, all the songs that he, you know, that he did, you know, that he would score around the singers and stuff like that. Yeah. That franchise music was John Barry, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he left his stamp. If there was a Mount Rushmore of the influencers of Bond, you know, you'd have maybe one of the producers like uh, Kobe Broccoli, Ian Fleming, obviously, but John Barry, I think, is an essential mm -hmm. ingredient there. So, yeah. Oh, totally. Yeah. Podcast yeah. recommendations. Obviously, there's the Spy Hards and there's really 007. Uh, those guys mm -hmm. are good at interviewing so many people. Like all your favorite henchmen have pretty much been interviewed on there, some of the Bond girls. Uh, inside the stunts, you guys would all appreciate because those are from actual longtime stunt performers who have worked on oh, all wow. those big, expensive oh, British well. productions, and they can break down a scene as if you're watching it right now. And you're like, "Oh, that's right, that's that one scene where the henchman <laughs> loses his wig." It's actually <laughs> a different sized guy and everything. And uh, you know, they've worked on everything: Titanic, Saving Private Ryan, all the Christopher Nolan productions. But they they're really good at also outlining some of the. It, it's almost like they're unofficial spokesperson at times because they can also sum up all these other long time gone people and what they brought to the scene, why they became assistant and second unit directors and coordinators, <laughs> and I why they had. To say, 
Go ahead. I love the Calypso music from Dr. No, too, though. I mean, oh. the, the, the opening theme is amazing, but yeah. then all the other music was incredible. So oh, man. They do yeah. three blind mice at the beginning. Yeah. Yes, they do. Oh, man. <laughs> Yeah, and <laughs> it's action. Back. And 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 the and the titles. I love to be, you know, because we were all when you were growing up, all the titles were you know the, the women, you know, scantily <laughs> let's say naked, you know, flutter. Yeah. It's actually Doctor naked. No. Yeah, sure. <laughs> yeah, actually naked. Yeah, Doctor No. It's like it's like it's like bouncing around the screen. Mm-hmm. Like you're like, bah, 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 you know. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So the dots are such a cool effect for that like early yeah. 60s vibe and, yeah, yeah oh, i really man. love that and yeah that was that was pop art i think i know yeah into... excellent i wouldn't be surprised if andy warhol paid a visit there's Although, a yeah, there. to see that one the first came in 61 too, uh, there's a title we got there mike it is always <laughs> funny when they're on tv and you can clearly tell which titles they've sped up or they've had to modify yeah to where they look a little less busty and you're like <laughs> although i have to give a shout out to my dad who introduced me to james bond and thunderball Woo! and those titles way too young eight years old <laughs> over oh, yeah. all protestations took me to go see thunderball you know or let me watch thunderball at home you know Woo! So, <laughs> you know even edited for tv i'm still Open my eyes to a whole new world. <laughs> <laughs> Take your first steps into a larger world. It is yeah. also funny just seeing yeah. this and kind of like Indiana Jones. You're just like, man, this would have been hard R back, you know, nowadays. <laughs> but yeah. Different time and era. Um, and everyone's cool with it. You'll still see them even be aired on network TV with very little modifying. And you're like, yeah, okay, whatever. Um, so I'll, I'll get started on these rankings. Uh, just to lead us off. Uh, it's a five star scale, and I'll just throw these out. I'd like I, I pretty much know where I stand, and just to open up the uh, panel, um, if I'm gonna rank four and a half out of five, I gotta go from Russia with Love and the new Casino Royal. Like okay. I, I, I watch them just constantly on repeat. I love how they're staged and framed, uh, and just the bad guys deliver. And I like how there's like multiple layers to it. And I always get something new from them each viewing. Uh, kudos to the From Russia with Love video game, too. Um, oh, yeah. Where Connery returned. Um, mm-hmm. The four out of fives, I'm going to give Dr. No, You Only Live Twice, Living Daylights, Tomorrow mm-hmm. Never Dies, The Various Video Games, Golden Eye, and The Rock. <laughs> i'm sorry john mason is totally undercover bond i agree with that theory <laughs> oh yeah yeah i kind of nice. go with that theory too oh because i mean the writers really hit that at multiple times you're like okay if maybe disney they use a certain with... period of years right they like mentioned yeah. a certain period of years michael bay throws in yeah. so many easter eggs it's like it's not a homage that's <laughs> yeah so the three and a half out of fives the ones that are fun they're flawed but i still have them on so often Operation Kid Brother. Oh, <laughs> I had to go Mr. Science Theater. Yeah, just, <laughs> you see that in there. I was just saying uh, about that. Yeah, yeah, Neil Connery. Well, he's so, not shown, but he's good enough. Hey, you're well, right. Money, money <laughs> Penny's in it. I, the, the, the same yeah, Money Penny. M and Money right. Penny are in it. M and Money Penny. And, and M. Yeah. M, yes. Money yeah. Penny. Largo. Largo. Um, and oh, the bat, Tatiana. Uh, the, the bad guy from, from Thunderballs in love. it. Yep. And yeah, if Lord I'm not mistaken, it. Ennio Morricone does the music. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yep. Mm-hmm. Okay. And I've seen it on I love, that. I love his music. It's yeah. actually clears up some of the plot holes. It's just a little <laughs> longer. But yeah, so I'd, I'd go with that with the three and a half out of five, as well as The Spy You Love Me, License to Kill, Thunderball, Octopussy, World Is Not Enough. Uh, they're not as great, but I do like them in a mindless kind of action way. Spectre and Quantum Solace, I know they have their problems but that they're fun sunday 2 a.m kind of movie for me you and i had a mutual friend the three out of fives the ones i like but i kind of have issues with their scores and kind of just the filler uh and they're they're fine in their own right it's just not my personal cup of tea but they're watchable is uh goldfinger for your eyes only diamonds are forever live and let die the 1967 yeah. Casino Royal. It's worth a watch. <laughs> it's just... Oh. <laughs> just don't, expect, you know, yeah, that's you just don't expect, you know, yeah. Matt Helm level awesome, you know, like, in like Flint. 
uh, Skyfall, it's fun, but I really don't care for Thomas Newman's score. And the beginning is kind of sloppy on rewatches. Like, it has nothing to do with the rest of the movie. Now, the two and a half's out at fives. But the it, sets one... up, it sets up what happens to his character, but yeah. I know, but I, yeah. I don't find it exciting at all. <laughs> like, huh. okay. he could have just been injured. That would have been way better instead of friendly fire. That was stupid. Um, okay, gotcha. <laughs> uh, money penny you're bad at your job um <laughs> my my wife's not a bond fan but she liked the oh judy dent ship yep take the shot she liked her delivery on that line and so yeah yeah so. she she's good in it i just hated how they killed her off i was just like come on whatever um two and a half out of fives they're bad but they're not unwatchable they're just they leave a lot to be desired. And I'm going to go with A View to a Kill. Again, Chris Walken is amazing. But that movie really drags and has just so many holes I can shoot through. Die Another Day. Again, I love Paul Oakenfold. He was not the best composer for this. And this film has not aged well CGI-wise. Man with the Golden Gun. Again, love Christopher Lee. But this film just, again, just the setup for it is very convoluted. Um. Honor Majesty Stigic Service. Sorry, guys. I'll, I'll duck out. Oh, my goodness. I, I oh, love wow. how it's shot. <laughs> yeah. I love, oh, dear God. I, know, I, love, I love Tilly Savalas. I love the photography, but Lazenby just cannot carry this movie. Oh, my God. And well, I love... I, 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 don't worry. You'll get, you'll get your moment. I, okay, I, okay. And the 1954 Climax episode of Casino Royal. Oh, boy. How do you, <laughs> it's a rough one. Okay. Now... Now, uh, the ones out of fives, the one, the ones, the not Ooh. better yet, actually the zero. Ooh, oh, it's there. Uh, that and yeah, so the zero out of fives. I will never watch these again. Uh, yeah. Never say never again. Sorry, J- James, it, it did not hold up for me. Um, Moonraker definitely. This is just a bad Star Wars fan film. And I'm gonna put oh, no time. Jesus, I'm gonna put no time <laughs> to die. Like, oh man, just this music video a soundtrack and Craig just looking like he doesn't want to be there and Q and M are so inconsequential to the plot and the robotic photography. I'm just like, this is the dead man walking of a film (laughs) was not dramatically rewarding. And the less said about that ending, the better, but overall, this is a very, very strong franchise. Like even when it's at its worst, you really want to just go out and see it on the big screen. It's just a very Mm. compelling one. It, there's a lot of wins. I think a lot of people like to just say, oh, there's four good ones, five, oh, you know, okay, decent ones, and then everything else sucks. I don't think that's necessarily the case, but uh, Philip, you are the Bond expert. Well, which ones draw you mainly to the franchise? Which ones make you say, I want to go to the theater? I want to see a remaster of this. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, I was able to see Dr. No um, last year for like the, the 60th anniversary. And I think that one definitely still holds up. Um, introduction to the character, a very strong performance from Sean Connery, nails it right out of the gate. Um, and as we Gold mentioned, really cool. Bond. <laughs> yeah. He kind of had really a little cool boy, and... I am not Spock yeah. kind of mentality for a while. <laughs> it's like, yeah, yeah. Sorry, dude, at the beginning, Bond. he really enjoyed it. Um, but yeah, as, as it got a little bit further, him and the producers had some issues. But I, I agree with the franchise, you know, uh, it is even at its worst, it's still spectacle, it's still entertaining, it's, it's still going to drop people. You actually in. force yourself to like watch even the bad ones just so you can analyze the scene. <laughs> Like, yeah, you know, they yeah. shot that. Look at the setting. How did they get the rights to film in this part of Greece? You know? Yeah, incredible stunt work in all the films. Uh, I have to say, I prefer watching the worst Bond film to like the best Fast and the Furious. But as as far as oh, um, any day, yeah, <laughs> is there it's, a really good Fast and the Furious? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, the, be- the best one is the one that that goes at the end. Right. Yes. <laughs> the best parts are the cre- credits. Yeah. But I mean, I didn't mind Hobbs and Shaw, but see, that's a Tango and Cash movie with the Fast and Furious characters. <laughs> yeah. You know? But um, yeah. As far as the, good point. <laughs> the ones that draw me in, I had like a top 10. I didn't necessarily do, you know, the star rankings, but I'll kind of go like the Roger Ebert style and him and Cisco used to do the top 10. I'll mention kind of up from 10. Uh, Cisco, just shut mention up. The, 
<laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, I'll mention up from 10, just kind of the names of the ones for the first five, and then I'll give a little blurb about the top five that yeah. I have. So, um, <laughs> Uh, 10, I would say Octopussy. Uh, number nine, License yes. to Kill. Uh, number eight, From Russia with Love. Number seven, Casino Royale. Uh, number six, I'd go with For Your Eyes Only. Ooh. Um, number five, I would go with Moonraker. I, I severely disagree with your assessment. No, it's this fine. is it's fine. Roger oh, Moore okay. at the height of his powers. Uh, this is the man <laughs> that's it's fine. nailing every single line. He's completely charming, completely in control. He's become the new version of bond and that's now i gotta really... riddle you this do you geek out whenever you see the bad guy in that like in movies like munich oh yeah uh he's yeah. The, like one of the contacts and I, michael I, lonsdale yeah, yeah, yeah i guarantee great. you people that's... will see him and they're like the bond he'll always once you're a bond villain or bond girl everyone's like that's all you are like <laughs> i know that right. guy I've i seen, grew up watching you i saw him in a movie called the jackal uh, with, uh, yeah. mm -hmm. james fox where he played the french policeman that oh, was he great. is in yeah. that with Edward Fox, yeah. yeah, shoot, yeah, I think he's one of the reasons why I like the film too. He has like a great presence as a villain. He's one of my favorite villains. He'd be on my top five villains. No, it's list. fine. I, I get it. Um, I know people. I think the effects that. are still really cool for for what they are. I will um, do that. Yeah. <laughs> and I think it's just a really fun movie. I always have fun watching it. It's not of the Daniel Craig ilk and Timothy Dalton where it's pretty oh, serious. Uh, <laughs> not a Fleming-esque Bond film by any means, but it's a fun spy adventure, I would say. Um, <laughs> number four, I'd go with Honor Majesty's Secret Service. Um, that's <laughs> nice. one of my all-time. Uh, I think the villain is great. One of the best blow... Or he has the best blow film. Oh, Jack. Wallace. Um, <laughs> I think George Lazenby, I think the emotional seat of at the end is is really well done by him and i think him coming from the background he did of not really being an actor but being just this very arrogant guy that kind of walked in and cheated his way into the role <laughs> by lying to the wasn't he, a, wasn't he a model or something yeah he was like an awesome yeah. model <laughs> was New yeah he was like the highest paid male model in europe at the time <laughs> and um he just kind of walked into where they were having you know the office for the james bond producers walked in their office and said I heard you're looking for James Bond and he told him he'd acted in all these films. He never acted before, but he's able to fool them. So that kind of like bravado and plus he, you know, just in, in his real life had been in like hundreds of fights in the Australian <laughs> outback, uh, just getting drunk and stuff. Like he's really convincing in those fight scenes. Um, and True. so I, I really enjoy <laughs> that. Uh, number three, Dr. No, uh, for Ooh. the reasons I mentioned earlier. Um, Ooh. I think that's a really exciting flamethrower uh, scene. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Ursula Andress, iconic. Uh, Ursula Andress, me for sure. <laughs> um, Goldeneye, I would say number two because Goldeneye. Ooh. That was my introduction to the series, but also it's just I think the perfect balance of humor and action and like the seriousness and, and fact, coming out of the Cold War. Uh, fun fact: It's the only James Bond movie with the F word in Russian. All right. Yeah. And like what? I think it's Zena on the top or Zenia. something. Yeah. something at them, and they Ray had to edit it out yeah. in the NBC <laughs> when they found that out. They're like, oh, she's technically <laughs> just said fuck off. Uh, we, we can't have that be on the censors. <laughs> <laughs> that one did kind of push the boundaries quite a bit with the. This was the first Bond I saw, but. And I saw it at a young age too. I think some. Oh, mentioned. you played the game <laughs> first. And I played the. Well, no, I actually watched the movie first. Oh, yeah, um, I remember my dad brought it home on VHS from Blockbuster and was like, "Hey, you know, this is this is the new one. I haven't seen this." But the sex scenes in there were pretty racy compared to the yes. other ones, the oh, other yeah. Bond Tops. films. Uh, yeah. Yeah, Anna on a top. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, oh, but man. Pierce yeah. is um, totally commanding from the beginning. This person was built to be James Bond. He, out of you know some lab somewhere they created the perfect looking i would have been so angry spot. back in the day had i been and, on a and, and show can you say one thing about that movie too sure joe don baker yes a cia operative jack wade jimbo <laughs> yes <laughs> i i think um his character is jack wade fits uh joe don baker so much more than the villain role he paid played in a the living daylights yeah. i think it's just Fair his enough. affable it looks like they just, is just so didn't tell great. him what to do so he just was hamming it up in dalton's while yeah. here martin campbell is known to be very spot on with the actors even if they don't know where they are in the scene and he's always good at just telling them hey just be intense <laughs> so you had uh, 
Haggard in there as a KGB agent. Yes. <laughs> Rest in uh, peace. Yeah. Love Cracker. Love that and, man. And, 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 and also, who plays his girlfriend in the movie? Oh, uh, he's a driver. Yeah. Yes. Oh, wow. Yeah, Singing yeah. Stand By really Your Man. I know what it was at the time. Yeah. It was like she had like a mortgage due, and next thing you know, it was like, I'm. I'm in a James Bond movie. I thought I was just doing a dumb <laughs> nightclub scene in a movie. <laughs> no, she just, she just, mm-hmm. she, she just did that movie with Chris O'Donnell, and she was like, getting. She, they said, "All right, put her in a Bond movie." <laughs> yes. so, that's pretty good. Well, hunting. Yeah, like yeah, yeah, before. So. Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. Before Will and Grace and all those. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. All right. Um, but golden eye solid uh for my top one i would go with the spy who loved me uh um, yeah roger moore one i ever saw definitely and I, I think on bond twitter right now this one actually is trending pretty high for most people if it's i think not people the love the three. submarine designs and everything and uh submarine. the bad guy from Beverly yeah. Hills. yeah it <laughs> is like when people think of um a james bond movie with like great stunts and you know beautiful women oh, exotic locations like this army in this <laughs> great hits song all great of those credits things. too great yeah. song great credits the score is yeah. fun uh, uh there's like very little that i'd have to say against it just because it's built for roger moore and it just is firing on all cylinders and you get a shark and perfect no, no, that. yes yeah <laughs> You have the iconic opening with the uh, the British flag parachute too. So. Yeah, they went That's they true. went for broke and they killed it and uh, brought Bond back and showed that they could do it with another actor other than Sean Connery because the first two Roger Moore's uh, people were still kind of figuring one was a black exploitation you know, movie, the other was kind of whatever <laughs> kung fu movie. Yeah, it was just adapting <laughs> what was popular at the time yeah. in the early seventies. Yeah, it was like here and here, we'd, here's be, one we'd be reason. and we'd be remiss if we didn't mention. Another role that Roger Moore played James Bond in, uh, Ken Ballroom. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Which one? Seymour, Seymour, G- Seymour Goldman, heir to the Goldman Girls found, uh, fortune. You know something, Mama? You're too Jewish. Like I said, Mother. Seymour, put that away. If you want to be some coy active like Roger Moore. <laughs> 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 nice man all right so nim uh we always let the newcomers go first uh um we'll let you uh take it away uh, what order however you want to rank it if you want yeah I, I, i'll take a shot at the the star ranking so take a um, shot just don't do it just don't let uh, money penny sh- shoot the gun yeah. <laughs> i will <laughs> say that uh i i i'm a fanboy when it comes to most of these films so i mean i you got to take a star off probably if you want to be more subjective but you don't me, get rambo or jack bauer without <laughs> freaking <James Bond. laughs> yeah uh 4.5 to 5 i mean a bunch of the ones that i grew up with as a young kid are in there so uh, there's a lot uh dr go uh, is in that mm. area uh mm-hmm. from russia with love uh mm. goldfinger uh a lot of this is nostalgia i mean goldfinger is the first bond book i read and uh you know and that opening scene is you know pretty much right out of the book you know they depart some plus you can't go wrong with the scene where i won't say the name in case we get edited by youtube or something but he's like oh, you know bond is like you must be joking you know <laughs> after he finds out the name oh pussy galore <laughs> yeah <laughs> it's, mm-hmm. i mean it's, it's, it's fantastic i could listen to that over and over again did they ever um, edit that out on tv just wonder no they never no, did I don't think no, so, no. Never, they that's so wild there. Yeah, they um, flinch about anything else about people dropping their pants on a Stephen Bond show, out? but not on. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Thunderball <laughs> is definitely in there for me. Honor Majesty's Secret Service, right. and uh, <laughs> I will finish up with the Spy Who Loved Me in the yes. four point five out of yeah. five. So uh, I think everyone I think, loves Spy. <laughs> yeah, I think those are all just absolutely iconic. Yes. Um, so four to four point five. Um, I put You Only Live Twice in there, um, and I think it gets a boost for me. Because Whitewashing I love, aside, it is a lot of fun. Yeah, and I love the song. <laughs> I just absolutely love the song. Oh, um, yeah. It's really cool. Yeah, uh, that's one of the best if you have it on for in the sure. background, you'll recognize it as kind of Bond's fight theme. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my God, around. yeah, man. With that's the aerial one. view, and he's got, like, five henchmen chasing yeah. him on the roof. That's such always... a cool idea that they did, yeah. yeah absolutely oh. no resemblance <laughs> to the book, though. You only live twice. So. Oh, I imagine, <laughs> yeah. The, the um, title is pretty much all they often would use in the beginning. Yeah. 
<laughs> um, I would also put um, For Your Eyes Only is definitely in there. Uh, the only reason I didn't put this up at 4.5 is that I didn't want to put all the movies up there at 4.5, 55. Um, okay, okay. I, yeah, <laughs> I would also put in there, and this is going to be controversial, I think The Living Daylights is a is a good movie. You know, mm, I, yes. I, I yeah. like The yes. Living Daylights. It's way uh, more fun. An argument for me, yeah. <laughs> you, know, you don't want to introduce License to Kill out the wazoo. Yeah. You want to have that for the grittier Miami Vice. Uh, you know? <laughs> I, I would also put in... Uh, the 2006 Casino Royale here mm -hmm. uh, in the four to four point five, and uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna put Skyfall in there. I like Skyfall. Um, awesome. I, I think it's, it's a good movie. Um, I will also add in there. I I, I kind of torn between Goldeneye and Tomorrow Never Dies, but I have to say I think Goldeneye has the better villain. Sean Bean is awesome. Or England so, James. Yeah, I, I, I gotta put Goldeneye in there because. <laughs> Uh, tomorrow never dies villain is just you know he's he's kind of like okay whatever so you know but it was based off rupert murdoch right yeah yeah mm -hmm. I mean, right. it's like my god and, and stamper got killed way too early you know he was the guy who should have gone oh the dolph the lundgren look alike yeah yeah, yeah. so <laughs> what a shame dolph lundgren had to be in a view to kill and not in that one yeah Star yeah. meter would have risen had he been in the better part <laughs> let's see uh 3.5 to 4 uh, I'm gonna put "Live and Let Die" here, uh, mostly because Jane Seymour um, uh -huh. introducing her into the movie. She's uh -huh. fantastic, but I also have to say <laughs> the guy who plays Kawanga is good, and then the guy from the yeah, Seven Up Dakota. commercials. Yeah, Seven yeah, Up commercials. Yeah, yeah, the bad guy. Yeah, yeah. yeah excellent. Villain. Holy exploding the head, spy man. nuts. The yeah. fun spy nuts. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> let's see. Um, so his what head was exploding years before his chest was exploding in Alien. Yeah. Um, I think I would put Tomorrow Never Dies here, and um, mm -hmm. I'm going to, you know, I feel bad. I like Pierce Brosnan, but I think that's going to be as high, you know, the next highest Pierce Damn. Brosnan. <laughs> um, I think that I would also put uh, Spectre here in the 3.5s. Um, then three, I'm going to put, let's see, I got to look at my rankings here. I'm going to put Moonraker here. I'm going to put... Uh, <laughs> Bill of the, the Happy now. He's like, yeah. The Man with the Golden Gun. Uh, Octopussy. Never Say Never Again. A View to a Kill. And um, The World is Not Enough. And I think that's it. You know, they're all movies that are very imminently watchable, but they're not my first choice. And wow. then for everything else, uh, <laughs> you know, I, they, they kind of all get lumped in there. So um, just to go quickly, Quantum of Souls is kind of boring to me. You know, it's like there are, there are times when it's good, but Fair enough. there are times when I'm kind of bored. Um, Never Seen Never Again is such a poor movie compared to Thunderball, as far as I'm concerned. You know, uh, License to Kill was, I wish that pure. Uh, Timothy Dalton had gotten another chance because that was such a sad sophomore effort for him when uh -huh. I, I liked him. <laughs> Fair enough, yeah. Um, uh, but by the way, Nim, you and I had a mutual friend. What's that? That's the line from Quantum of Solace when he's Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. oh, God. <laughs> I, I, I drove my brother and cousins crazy every time we were playing Call of Duty and I would just uh, do a take on that line. You and I had yeah. a common friend and just wham! Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Throw a grenade die, at him. <laughs> die another day. I can't get past Madonna fencing. Oh no! <laughs> uh, the worst cameo. I still yeah. refuse to watch uh, anything with Toby Stevens. Um, in it. You and I had a mutual friend. And oh, then, what happens in Die Another Day with Madonna? She's, Remember, she's the fencer. Yeah. She not only oh, sings the title Jesus. song, but she, she cameos, basically wanted yeah. had to be like, in the movie. What is she yeah. doing in the movie? Yeah. Does anybody want to Shanghai Surprise? <laughs> and, and then, then, at least um, um you know the, the baseball the... movies with them <laughs> she's an only the wrong life. actors the wrong script <laughs> and then, william defoe uh, doesn't regret working with her so that tells you something um uh -huh. and on. then just to wrap it up i don't think there are enough drugs for the uh 1967 uh Casino Royale. Oh, uh, oh, <laughs> and uh, Diamonds Are Forever is a movie I should like, but oh man, it's it's just no, you can enough. tell at that point that um, 
Sean Connery really just doesn't care. He's there to get paychecks. <laughs> Fair so, enough. Yeah. Yeah. He's a bit bloated. He's a bit. <laughs> yeah. Fair enough. Yeah. Fair enough. He's like, how, <laughs> how do I, I, I get some money so I can do Zardoz? <laughs> yeah. No, Zardoz. He's broken. He's like, I'm going to stay in the casino while you film this next scene. <laughs> uh, I see <laughs> some LGBT groups getting offended at the flamboyant henchmen. To me, yeah. these movies are so over the top. I think that just adds it more. Those are like the only life in that movie for me. I, I think those are two of the best guys in the movie. Yeah. <laughs> I, they get I think, freaking think, lit on the, fire with their own mechanics. <laughs> like, come on. The, the thing I love about those two guys is that they're just like, what do you think, uh, Mr. Kid? Oh, I think that I think she'll, you know, and it's like they're, they're, it's Putter Smith and, yeah, yeah. Um, Bruce, and Bruce Glover, who's Crispin Glover's dad. I think they said yeah. behind the scenes their inspirations was to make a Laurel and Hardy kind of just yeah. dorky henchman who you just kind of yeah. like to see, Phil. <laughs> it's, it's pretty hilarious when he's stuck in that pipeline with the rat and he's like, who smells like a French tart? Oh, it's me. Oh, you know? my God. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, my man. word. Yeah. <laughs> And There's this a... is kind of where they got going for him compared to some of the other. I, before you get to Steven and D'Souza's, you know, 48 Hours and Die Hard, is like these movies <laughs> kill it in the one liners department. Was, yeah. Uh, yes. Yeah, Tom Mankiewicz helped, helped, helped write a lot of that dialogue and it has excellent lines and oh, don't like forever. <laughs> yeah. He's like, that's a nice little nothing you're almost wearing, I approve. <laughs> yeah. If there's anything <laughs> that's the one of the great told them yeah. all to do was make sure you have or, a shit eating grin when you just bust out that line. Just, or, yeah. or in Thunderball when uh, he comes in and the, the the female villain is in the shower and she's like, Can you hand me something? And he hands her a pair of slippers. Yeah. You know? <laughs> yeah. That's one of the all time. Oh my yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's a great yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, no one can see it now. Mike is literally already halfway through the license to kill. My word. Robert Davi did you get where Robert Davi blows up uh whatchamacallit yet? Uh, I think he's not there yet. To the, uh, we, yeah, we've seen a bunch yeah. of Anthony Zerb moments, but he's not quite there. Oh, yeah. But uh, he's already past the scene where license revoked. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so um, uh, oh man, uh, Mike, I'll let you go uh, next. Uh, okay, Nim, um, you, you you did a hell of a take. <laughs> thank you. I think yeah. so. <laughs> yeah. All right, so um, Mike, uh, where are you going to rank your? Double seven. I guess I'm gonna try to go chronological and the Conneries. Um, well, Goldfinger, of course, has got to be up there at five, five, four and a half, five. And to Russia with love is misogynistic as Connery's Bond and Connery himself can be. That's actually <laughs> yes. It's actually yeah. a decent love well, story. Sure slut woman. <laughs> yeah, but it's actually a decent love story, and uh, it's almost a separate thing from the Bond thing. And of course, Doctor No, you know, introducing the character. Absolutely, those are all top ranked. He puts comics. Jack Lord in his place. So that is it. <laughs> is it from Russia the Love, the one where he has to judge a a fight between two gypsy women or something too? Yep. Yeah. yeah, yeah he just chooses both. Scene, so <laughs> wild. It was the sixties. It's the in the seventies too. It sneaks in there. Um, <laughs> problematic stuff. Well, the, then you got like three and a half, four. Um, you only live twice. I mean, yeah, disguising himself as an Asian. <laughs> oh, <geez. laughs> he's, what six two or whatever. Race blind back then. Yeah, <laughs> like, oh man! And some of the commentary, <laughs> some of the racist things he says. It's just oh yeah, yeah. That's a that's a low one. That's a low point. Um. No, that's well, fair. <laughs> Thunder, Thunderball is an action pack one, of course, and then never say never again. They they pretty much did it over again. Yeah, uh, <laughs> right. What am I missing? Well, a young, and I, uh, if I don't, a young JJ Abrams took notes. Yeah. Oh God! <laughs> oh wow! Oh, and then God. other than that, it's Diamonds Are Forever, the comeback, right? Pretty much. Yeah. Yeah. Back after Honor Majesties with George. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, but I think that's the Connerys and. That that's a decent one. I give that a four. Four. Uh, hey, <laughs> it's entertaining spy comedy. Yeah, it's got good stuff in there. Yeah. I feel like a lot of people rip off the oil rig explosion at the end, like on an average episode of TV. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> where where do you want to take down the villain's lair? Go to an oil rig. <laughs> Save the woman. <laughs> Save the briefcase. Extract I yourself. Jimmy Dean playing a Howard Hughes like millionaire. 
He pretty much. Jesus. She pretty so much. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Willard yes. White. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. The yeah. lazy guy. Give that a three point seven five. <laughs> he's um, you know, he's not really equipped to play Bond. But I will say that the <coughs> ending. I don't want to give away the ending, but he would. I think he pulled that off better than Connery would have. You, it's more emotional and dramatic, and I think he brought the image to it. You know, the the final the final shot, what he says. Oh. On her Majesty's, yeah, yeah, on her Majesty's. yeah. I'm She's sorry, yeah. yeah, She's having a rest. This, yeah, it's just heartbreaking. Yeah, uh, mm-hmm. trying to think. Uh, the first Connery or first, um, uh, Connery, um, Moore. Roger Moore, <laughs> Roger Moore, <laughs> not uh, the saint. <laughs> yeah, Roger Moore. I overall, I think he did one or two too many. He started just. You know, going yeah. on the show and making fun of the character and all that stuff. I, I could do without the Tarzan screaming octopusy. <laughs> yeah, that's <laughs> the uh, one. Was or, a, or doing, uh, California what is that? <laughs> when he's riding the freaking snowboard. Or in the in the car <laughs> in the car stunt where you hear a woo. Uh, 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 they uh, shouldn't have. Uh, yeah, because yeah. it's, it's a perfect stunt. For your eyes only, yeah. almost got directed by Spielberg. They said "fuck you," so then he said, <laughs> "Okay, I'll make Indiana Jones with my buddies." <laughs> that works. Show you. Kind of, uh, <laughs> Live and Let Die. It, it was a black exploitation film. Ah, uh, yes. <laughs> the one that, I could do without the. I could do without the Archie Bunker type uh, sheriff. Yeah. Uh, and oh, they brought him back. Oh, no, they were back, referencing yeah. Smokey the Bandit, Pepper. I think. Yeah, <laughs> he's in like a... Well, that, no, 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 he's, he's, I think it's pre-Smokey in the Bandit, though, isn't it? Oh, it is? Yeah, mm-hmm. pretty yeah. sure. Oh. Yeah, it's early Little 70. I was 73. Yeah. Because McCartney's record was coming out at the same time Band on the Run. Oh. And it was kind of like hyped up, like, hey, Paul McCartney's doing a James Bond movie. And he oh. got back to you with, with uh, George Martin after, yeah. you know... So that was the big. Uh, wow. That's one of the, the best to do. That's in the top five Bond teams. I I love that. And then yeah. Guns N' Roses made another hit of it. Da, and I saw. Da, 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 I, I think, I, I think we, he played Grand Rapids. I'm pretty sure he did that. Oh yeah. Anyway, I've seen him twice. I, I'm sure he did it both times. Um, let's keep going. Oh the, the uh, ba 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 ba. Ba 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 ba. Yeah ba ba ba. The man with the golden gun is referenced in Spectre toward the end. Hmm. Of course, Spectre references a lot of the old Bond movies. That that's why I really enjoyed it. A lot of people didn't like Spectre, but anyway, I think talking. it was just the villain and the origin story. But if you go with just the stunts, you'll have fun. But I, I can understand it. The second half is a little different. Um, <laughs> it was a different type of Bond film because it's kind of a, almost like a most dangerous game plot. And, it is um, kind of like that. Yeah, James Bond does kind of hard target. Tattoo is in it. Is it tattoo in that one? Yeah, oh. early villages was early villages. Sure. Yeah. So I give that he about three and a half. Hey, you're getting warmer, Mister Bond. <laughs> he winds up stuck <laughs> in the railing on the mast of the at the end. <laughs> the spoiler, yeah. sorry. Three and a half. Um, but up, but Spy Who Loved Me, I saw in the drive-in years ago. And yes. that opening stunt is amazing. No CGI. Oh, it's an yes. actual stunt. If you watch oh, yeah. it, it's riveting. Ooh, man, it is, stunt, yeah. It's almost gets tangled. His skis almost get tangled up in the parachute. I mean, he could have yeah. gotten Was, killed. Wasn't that opening stunt from Goldeneye actual and practical as well? If, if I remember. Yeah, right, I think so. so. I, th- I, yeah. think the, I, I think he's just meaning like at that time, like that was the yeah. first. No, no. But, but that was, yeah, that was... An, you know, for for a long time, it was just as an opening. You know, yeah. yeah. Most of the time, um, they did all the car stuff after the fact. <laughs> there's all there's, you always have great openings, you know. But but that's I mean, you got to. That's like a Bond requirement. <laughs> yeah. Mr. Bond, Mr. Before okay. they started hiring pop artists like Billie Eilish. Oof. Um. So yeah, Spy Who Loved Me has got like they were. Somebody was saying the international. You know, it's the whole global thing, and um. Pretty good villain, you know, mm-hmm. in a jaw, you know. Credit Jaws. You know, unfortunately, yeah. they they try to make him a good guy in the next movie, and that kind of ruined the whole thing. <laughs> Is that Moonraker? 
yep. it's Moonraker where he becomes uh, he, yeah, <laughs> he falls in love. And I don't want to find no more. <laughs> That's one of the ones I like. Mystery Science Theater. I bet this monster turns out to be good. You know? <laughs> now, fun fact: he does show up in the Everything or Nothing video game. That's right. Moonraker was the next one. There. Okay. Uh, but, but but I mean, but no, no, it's fine. But yeah, the Jaws fights Pierce Brosnan's version in that video game, and William Dafoe <laughs> plays uh, the protege of Max Zorin, Chris Walken's character. Mm. So, if there's any Bond video game that should have been a movie, it's that one. <laughs> it's sort well, of Pierce's right. like fifth Bond movie. Yeah, movie. In, in my mind, it's the fourth one. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, yeah. Let's go with that one. Then you got what for your eyes only. Mm-hmm. Yeah, which is oh, well, it's, it's Moonraker really, and like four that. years only. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Really, that's a it was one. supposed to be at the end. It was supposed to be James Bond will be back in for your eyes only. Oh, that's right. Oh, this was seventy six. Oh, okay. and then what happens is is that you know seventy seven Star Wars takes off and Cubby Brock was like, let's put James Bond in outer space. So, yep, yeah. And after that, uh, I'd give threes to Octo. And uh, <laughs> you to a kill, great villain, granted. And um, I mean, yeah. it got it Doesn't got that scene where he's getting out of the carnival and he's getting on a jet and he circles yeah. the missile back to the, what? <laughs> the opening scene for octopus. He dressed up as a clown best, at yeah. one point, too. And then, yeah, it's a bit, yeah, that's an octopus. <laughs> yeah, let's try something different. Yeah, <laughs> so after. A lot of uh, smart from Roger Moore all those years. Living Daylights was a breath of fresh air, I thought. I, uh, oh, yeah. And it's a good plot. And, he and has all these Rambo make... villains. Hey, he's trying to attack the Soviets. <laughs> 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 and they try to domesticate Bond a little bit. He's just got one girl through the whole movie. You know? He gets to that's... fight Carl from Die Hard. <laughs> yeah. I think that's when AIDS, AIDS started to hit. They'd try to make him more resp- sexually responsible. <laughs> mm-hmm. I, like Carl, Tony. To, I like License to Kill better. It's more of a badass movie. I oh, like fine. it. I, I think it's preferable as well. Yeah. yeah. All good. All good. Okay. I'm just glad he messed around with both tones. <laughs> yeah. And again, he, he brought a darker edge than the, even Connery, I think. He was a little more. Mm-hmm. He's a good fighter, and yeah, he yeah. plays dirty. And I, I mean, I think that's why everyone should do this more often. If you're going to. Hire someone to play your anti-hero, and just have it be someone who often is typecast as a villain. <laughs> mm-hmm. It's you know, it's interesting. Is we did a a podcast mm-hmm. on a man for or no, a line of winter, and I guess uh, Timothy Dalton wanted the so part good. that George Lazenby got, and then wanted yeah. was had to wait for all those years to finally get James Bond, and then only got the two movies. So yeah, uh, well, he oh, actually wow. uh, when he auditioned for. Or they brought him in to talk about on her Majesty's Secret Service. He he actually turned it down. He said he was too young. Oh, he was twenty two really? at the time. You're right. You're right. You're right. Yeah, he was twenty two yeah. years old. So I mean, yeah. it, he said Bond should be someone in their like mid thirties, late forties, which I agree with. It should be someone who's experienced yeah. a little bit, jaded, a and, little bit cynical about the world. And there was a sh- enough, there was a short list for who was going to be Bond, and I think that the, they had uh, from what I can remember reading, it was. Oliver Reed, Patrick McGowan, uh, yep. Alan Bates, uh, Albert Finney. I'm trying to think who else was John. John Gavin was considered. John Gavin yeah. was, Off was air, considered. I told James, and I shocked him with this: Adam West, uh, Sam Neill, and James Brolin. <laughs> yeah, later yeah. on, Sam Neill and James Brolin later wow. in the eighties. Even though yeah. they're American and Aussie, respectively, you're like, oh. I think uh, Sam Neill actually would have been pretty good but if you, you see you the little find, clip from can, his screen test yeah. I, I have mm-hmm. it's it's really mm-hmm. amazing to where i'm like at least i i think much like liam neeson who they wanted to hire for golden eye but he was too tall and different commitments um i feel like if you don't get the part of bond you should still get a villain offer yeah, yeah. or at yeah. least a henchman or something you know <laughs> Liam Neeson would have been a good villain i don't agree with liam neeson as bond i don't think that no no choice, i get it but, yeah, yeah, it's just yeah. He would have, oh. in my mind, he would have been a double three type. Who's like, James, you got to come here now. <laughs> I was, I was Anthony Hopkins never a Bond villain, right? <laughs> he was actually considered, really. Uh, yes. So uh. with Goldeneye, when they were still thinking about it for for Timothy Dalton, 
Um, originally, the character of 006, Alec Trevelyan, was going to be an older mentor that taught Bond how to be a spy. And that was oh, going to be yeah. Anthony Hopkins. And I think Anthony Hopkins would have killed it in that type of role where he's like, hey, I've, you know, I've been gone to the other side now and uh, you know <laughs> gone through to the other side <laughs> right right but he would have been a great like mentor then turned villain for that would have uh, been awesome. bond uh, so that that would have been pretty interesting i'm going to dine on you mr bond with some bond, i will only eat the upper part of your body <laughs> mr bond feast with the liver um <laughs> jesus what are we doing for more on that just watch the movie bad company and imagine yeah. hopkins is bond the whole time trying to kill chris rock um jeez <laughs> uh so the listeners can't see this mike has license to kill on and i'm just looking at all this ass kicking on in the background and i feel like someone on youtube to quote mystery science theater and joe don baker earlier they should <laughs> take the quote from mitchell the hero of the movie everyone and just Set that to all the various times where Bond is like slapping people in the face. Um, <laughs> the hero of the movie. <laughs> you know, it's so that brutal. whole truck sequence at the end is really dynamite. I mean, yes. Right? Mm -hmm. Oh my word. It's, 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 yep. I, I, it's, I, I like They that almost one. didn't get it. They were so behind schedule at that time. The stuntman's leg got caught on fire. <laughs> wow. Very chaotic near the end where there's like, what? You know, we need to get well, this in the can. We only can shoot at this factory for this X amount of time. <laughs> I do remember some critics saying his his buddy gets half eaten by a shark and he's all better by the end of the movie. Yeah, he's a little bit cheerful. <laughs> a I don't bit too chipper for that. Well, not dead yet. Anything, you know? <laughs> yeah. I don't know. It's really a flesh wound. But we're talking about fiction. I know. Now the Brazen movies. I'm. I always think of there's. He's loading his pistol in one shot in one of the movies, and there's a he just kind of moves his head a little bit when the bullet goes by and it's like that's really cool but that mm. was about it you know where as far as cool i don't know i was not a Bryson fan that much, no it's I fine i uh, much like it, robin hood and sherlock holmes they're only as good as the movies they're in even when yeah there's... i like parts mm -hmm. of the movies you know i like mm. the uh i like the whole pre-sequel was it uh tomorrow never die not tomorrow never dies What's the one where die another day where he's in the prison camp at the uh, beginning? Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. That, yeah. That, that whole sequence is North pretty Korean. good, and then but yeah. then it got. I mean, the invisible car and oh, uh, so bad. jump the shark a bit. <laughs> it was bad. And, then, and jumping off the boat and checking into the hotel. Meanwhile, you know, I love Paul Oakenfold, but that music does not fit that at all. It's just like, <laughs> you, ever, you know, it just occurred to me that they did a reverse. Uh, Die another day in and or die a reverse. Uh, you only live twice and die another day. So they went the opposite direction. So. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, with the uh, yeah with the dude. The, the South, South Korean guy. You won't know this. I am. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> but the, the, again, there's a lot of cool stuff in the. Holly Berry was a great Bond girl, but man, oh yeah, cool. that Golden, movie. Not oh, deserved. I like. Um, oh, what's her? Who is she? Oh yeah, that. Oh yeah, he's a oh, fan of uh, Sophie Moreau. Mar Sophie Marceau Moreau. and World's Not Enough. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes, Roger yeah. Roger Ebert's favorite of the Bond films. And I liked her in that uh, <laughs> one uh, SNL mo uh, alumni movie. Who was that? Oh come on, David Spade starred. Was it? Oh was yeah, in? yeah, yeah, yeah. Where he's got the dog. Yeah, oh, I think that's the only David Spade movie I ever liked. <laughs> I mean, it's like Police Academy Probably. 5 and 6 yeah. <laughs> was yeah, it like she the, don't sleep uh, on PCU <laughs> fair she, enough PCU. she was at Braveheart too right yes she yeah. was right. yes I love how I just turned it into oh, Michelle Yeoh is really good in Tomorrow Never Dies I like her in that oh yeah um, so yeah the equal time for the women in, in the Brazen movies I'll give kudos to that but most very strong yeah I, I'd give a Three seven five, four maybe, or not quite. Yeah, I'm just not. Just I don't know. Maybe. <laughs> maybe I just know too much. I've heard too much stuff about. Oh, I don't want to get the. I don't want to get sued. <laughs> but, but then you got Daniel Craig brought the character back, and he kind of took what Dalton started, took him a, a little step higher. And I like all four of them. 
Um, I would give him four. Yeah, you mean five? I'd give Skyfall almost a five. Oh, Uh, there's five of them. What's that? There's what? There's five of them. Are there five? (laughs) The Time to Die is the fifth. Yeah. Oh, Casino Royale. Casino, Quantum. Quantum. Sky Skyfall. Oh, well, you're right. There is five. Yeah. But the book I've got here only goes up to Skyfall. So uh, that's all good. All right. <laughs> and then Spectre. I like, like I said before, Spectre. I love because you can. It's fun counting the references to all the other Bond movies. But Batista doesn't say a single line until yeah. he's about to die. <laughs> you know, it's like shit. <laughs> you know what was, was strange for me with Spectre is it felt almost like a Mission Impossible movie. Masquerading yeah. As a Bond. The first movie, two were so. born and. Uh, the last one was kind of a Dark Knight type movie, and this one was, yeah, kind of more. <laughs> yeah. Rogue I, 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 I enjoyed Facebook, all of them, but yeah. Yeah, a Facebook friend pointed out how is he getting all these locations? All of a sudden he's here, and that you, there's no explanation, Inspector. <laughs> like, how, how do you get here now? You know, but yeah. I feel, um, I, I think you kind of look back at all the Bond movies, there's a lot of that going on too, though, but you know, it's yeah. a little, con- it's consistently inconsistent, if that makes sense. <laughs> Like yes. <laughs> hey, he regenerates. He leaps around wherever he needs to. Yeah, his, his agent is Bart Fargo. <laughs> it's nowhere near as bad as Game of Thrones, and that's all I'm going to say. Where yeah, that is, <laughs> I, I will concur with that. <laughs> at, le- at least this had an ending. Yeah. You and I had a mutual friend. And and you know you could be in the north, and, and all of a sudden you're all the way in. Estros or something. Hey, there's zombies here all of a sudden. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right. And um, plus, plus uh, as sexual as this franchise get, it never gets pornographic to where you're like, I got to turn this up. <laughs> yeah. That's yeah. true. It's more suggestive. <laughs> Did I t- turn to the wrong channel? What the hell's going on here? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the day is young. <laughs> Wait a minute. This is Cinemax under after dark. What the hell? Yeah. What yeah. the fuck? <laughs> HBO. Is well, that I didn't see. Yet? <laughs> is it the last one? Die another day. Is that that's the last dies? Brosnan one? Yeah. Or no, no? Oh, what's the uh, the no, last no, time no, to die? No, no time, time to die. die. Is the final. I did not see the end coming. I didn't know it. You know, and everybody knows by now. I just know. At the, I remember texting. They kill off James Bond. You know, spoiler. And I, it's totally surprised me. I didn't see it coming. And I do know Dana Gould podcast. He it really ticked them off. He says yeah. you don't do that to Bond. It's a fictional <laughs> character. He didn't Don't have to even stay. Uh, now we're trying to. Now he's going to come back, and he didn't really die like they've done in the Marvel movies. A hundred oh, times. Oh lord! Well, so, the, the and theory, the James Bond will return. There is the a we're going that James Bond is just the moniker, and that all these other actors. Yeah. Are them. It's I, I do concur with that. Uh, what what would Philip and Nibs take on it? Since everyone else shares a code name. On clear. on the Bond code name, I I don't really like that theory. Like, no, it's fine. I, <laughs> but I, I, I think I there's figured, um, since there's like three different Felix Leiters and double threes and sixes. <laughs> yeah. I think, um, yeah, <laughs> like what they showed in No Time to Die about like someone else taking over the 007 code. Yeah, I, I think makes that, sense. Yeah. But the character of James Bond just has certain elements. His background, it has to be the same person. I think what they're gonna do is just sort of reboot it. I mean, we've had several different. Batman's and and they're all different universes. I, I think they're just I, gonna restart with the no. That's a good point too. Bond, you know? <laughs> like you look at eighties Batman is like it's the I, same Alfred, so therefore it must be the same. I, I think <laughs> is there a Bond that you're looking for that you're looking forward to seeing? You know, a person is Bond. I think it should be as it's sort of always been, sort of an unknown. Maybe he's right. been in a few things, but uh, so you can show ago, some competence. Can you imagine? Not, uh, Years ago, it being Ian McGregor, Hugh Jackman, or Clive Owen. I I wouldn't yeah. mind seeing Idris Elba, to be honest with you. I mean, yes, I I really I think he would have been good, be but good. I think here's the other problem: all the ones who want to be it now are way too old. Yeah, this is true. Idris <laughs> yeah, is true. too old. I They're think he would have been a good be Bond at a certain <laughs> point. I, yeah, I never, some... I never gave it any thought, but I watched uh, Argyle in the theaters recently, uh, and Henry Cavill. Had, uh, yeah, I kind of gave thought to him as possibly being a Bond. He would be definitely like another light Bond, so you know it'd kind of go from uh, if you, you see know the one Roger of the Moore Brosnan type. If yeah. you see the newest, the second to last Mission Impossible, he is practically channeling 006 from Goldeneye the whole movie. <laughs> Where you're like, mm-hmm. he's too uh, good to be 
good. Of course, he's the backstabbing traitor, and he's been playing him the whole time. <laughs> I, I have to say, I didn't mind Bond dying so much in No Time to Die because I kind of looked at the whole Craig arc of movies as a separate timeline because mm, mm, Casino yeah. Royale, he he gets his first two kills there to get his double O and is just becoming a double O. That's and then true. They, put, yeah. they put the bookmark on it in No Time to Die, so it's almost like it's standalone stories and it's separate. Oh, completely. so it's like so, the Terminator verse, there's this James yeah. Bond verse, and there's everything and, and else. Why not? I think each of the not? Bonds is in a different universe. I think, you know, some of them have like that a consistent ally. <laughs> like, uh, you know, Pierce Brosnan's Bond doesn't necessarily have Felix Leiter. He has Jack Wade. Um, yeah. yeah, and there's you know just different versions. So I guess I yeah. just don't like how they do tragedy as much. Like uh, Born Identity and Jack Bauer, sure. I felt like they just it was earned because it was just so gritty the whole time. And I feel like they should have built up to it more, or maybe the death, just, you're saying uh, yeah, or, or maybe just take out a battalion of people like Rambo Death Wish style before just instead of just waiting for an airstrike, or maybe fake his death. <laughs> Yeah. Well, and and I, that death could think, have been good. I just don't think it was handled. Well, uh, it just it just felt like the filmmakers wanted to get over and done with. And I I did lose respect for the Carrie filmmaker when he's like, "Oh, James Bond's a rapist." I'm like, "Then why are you directing a Bond movie mm-hmm. if yeah. you have no connection mm-hmm. to the material?" I, I, I think that's, that's, that's two hundred minutes. Oh, that's exactly it. It's like it seems like much like we're casting people based on what their name means in like Japan or brazil but you're seeing a lot of that with filmmakers that doing comic books and video game movies they're saying yes without knowing the material it's like well no one's forcing you yeah you can just I, say no <laughs> i think it's kind of a shame that they may have wasted ralph Fiennes as uh m though because i wanted yeah. more from him and yeah q or yeah q didn't do anything in this it, movie really it, he did it a lot in the last it, two where he helps bond get back on his feet and i was just I, like can i see it, some more I, hacking from him as someone who really liked the Connery movies, I'm telling you, I, I think Ralph Fiennes kind of like gave you that 60s M vibe, yeah, he but did. with a, with a modern a twist point. to it. That's a good point. Yeah. He was solid. He, very sure. conservative, very laid back. He's like, listen, you do one thing wrong, I'm pulling you out. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, the thing I say about Ralph, 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 Ralph Fiennes is that Another Hannibal was, connection. Yeah. Like, <laughs> Sorry, I mispronounced it. Like, <laughs> no, it's all Ray good. Fines, yeah. He's I'm the one of those guys in the show who likes the English patient. Um. <laughs> Sorry, go ahead. I think, I, I think the one thing I, I, I can never get is how they would like, they just have two movies and then that's it. And if they're going to redo it, they should bring him back for another. It is kind of like Mission Impossible or the new girl each time. You're like, like you say, you would like it to little grow a little more. At least give him one more movie, <laughs> yeah. mm-hmm. instead of now I got to get used to a he- new people. It is kind of like on a TV show where like someone dies off and they don't follow up. Oh, you know why did they get transferred or why did they get shut down? You know, mm-hmm. <laughs> before I get adjusted to the new guy. <laughs> I, I forgot that I had memory hold this, but one of the unfortunate things I think they did was the John Cleese character and the. <laughs> oh, that, that that's why you would love the uh, everything or nothing video game. They bring him back. <laughs> I I love John Cleese, but do you I remember was like, those oh, Home Lord. Depot ads he used to do? Was it Target or Home Depot? I remember he did a lot of stuff in character as the uh, as R. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and well, what's he actually out. called R? He wasn't Q. I, I think he was R, and then he became Q. Get it? Q. Then he became oh, Q. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Desmond, Alphabet Desmond are hard. <laughs> I had oh. I had an outrageous thought when we were talking about who else could play Bond. Go back to the seventies. Oh. This is, and this actor has a dark edge to him. What if he wanted to change his, uh, try something new? Jerry Lewis. Oh, oh I can almost see it. I mean, he's got the physicality. Well, he could do a spinoff of Matt Helm, and then he and Dean fight on screen. Oh, well, that's right. Maybe they have a total hey. Matt Helm. Yeah. Matt Helm, you're going to die, Dean. Yeah, you gotta die, Dean. I don't know, but that that, that I that love would, the cinematic that, that universe. Would crumble just the first five screen tests. That would that would not work. Perfect. But... Hey, lady. Hey, this is Galore. <laughs> 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 uh, so you got <laughs> 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 
Anyway, we're, we're getting so off on Mike, a weird you're a comedy thing. fan. Uh, yeah, right. And Gil just mentioned Argyle. Uh, if you if you wanted a comedian to lead a Johnny English, uh, Kingsman, or Austin Powers type franchise, what what comedian would you put in a James Bond knockoff franchise? Oh, <laughs> um, well, okay. There's so a day. I, but which one? Current comedian. Yeah, oh, I can. But before we get back I to can... things, <laughs> I can't resist. I would have loved to have seen Dudley Moore do a spy movie. That would have been great. Well, yeah, it's good. Dudley Moore. Moore. I can um, see it. Maybe Stephen Fry when he uh, earlier on with Hugh Glory. <laughs> if, if we can resurrect yeah. him, can we get George Carlin as M or Q? <laughs> yes, <laughs> you're doing it wrong. <laughs> the hippy jippy Emmer man. Yeah, there you go. He's the American hey, contact. Man. He doesn't want anything to do with the Brits. He's like, yeah, <laughs> Lord. Bit of a stretch, I'll, but I'll, Albert Brooks might be able to pull it off. He Albert Brooks, uh, he and how about a mean, mean villain in uh, Drive? He could be a villain, and Richard Pryor could be Felix Leiter. <laughs> <laughs> See what I did there? <laughs> um, and, and that is one I thing I will give the uh, Daniel Craig era. Jeffrey Wright was so underused in all those movies. Oh yeah, like, yeah. yeah. And, like I've been, a a it, I've been a fan. I've been a fan since Slider, Basket yeah. and Shaft. And if you're gonna redo the 1967 uh, Casino Royale, Andy Kaufman is James Bond. Ooh, <laughs> that's not a that lots could, of physical comedy. That could be surprising. Yeah. Well, now, now I wish. Now I wish Jim Carrey could have done a 90s spoof before Austin Powers. No, I'll, let me throw in somebody else. I want to throw in Steve Carell. Ooh. Um, well, yeah, he, he did, did get smart. smart. He, he did, did smart, get yeah. smart. He did get smart. The new, yeah, yeah, and and let me do... ask, have you guys ever seen the movie version of the Operation Midnight Office episode? Yes. You and I had a mutual friend. They edited all the Office episodes together where he has the daydream that he's a spy. And you're like, oh, oh Lord. On yeah, behalf of my people, I'm going to nominate George Lopez for James Bond. So. Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he he played the spy in Balls of Fury. Yeah, that is true. With the we're, well, remember he uh, went with a yeah and with a he, Scarface persona. Yeah, <laughs> perfect. I'd watch that. And then he was Uncle Rudy the conspiracy nut in Blue Beetle. So that, mm -hmm. <laughs> yes. Oh my word. And James done to some confirm this. I heard that Adam West was up for yeah, yeah, yeah. At I, some I, point, I, I, I talked about that. that. And okay. much like James Brolin, they wanted him so bad, but they're like, ah, he can't do a British accent. It's just not gonna work. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know you, the oh, are all first. Oh, okay. Connery was a Welshman. How many of the yeah. Bonds have actually been British? Uh, so more, yeah. more, so more, and yeah. Uh, so that's well, pretty much. British would encompass British would encompass Scottish, Welsh, English, okay. all of yeah. oh, okay. So, so Sean Connery was Scottish. And okay. Brosnan right? was so he's British. Irish. So yeah. Brosnan was Brosnan and Lazenby were the ones that were outside of Britain. So, so Lazenby was Australian. <laughs> the rest yeah. are Welsh, British. Lazenby okay. was Australian. Um, Can you imagine Con Christian uh, Bale Brosnan being was, Brosnan, <laughs> Brosnan was Irish. Was yeah. Irish. Uh, uh, English was Moore and uh, Craig. And Craig, yeah. mm -hmm. I love it. And <laughs> you guys are dissecting this. Great. <laughs> Dalton was Welsh. Yep. Yeah. He was the Welsh man. Yeah. yeah. That's so why he says you. things are about to get nasty in uh, <laughs> the the license. <laughs> He's got that Welsh. Peter, Peter Sellers was English. So oh, there was, yeah. American, there there was an American actor for him too. In, in, like the very first appearance of Bond on film. That's yep. right. Barry yeah. Nelson. Nineteen fifty four. Barry Nelson. Nelson. Yep. That's right. And, and, and was. The, was uh, David Nevin Welsh. He was English. 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 Right. David English. English. Woody Allen. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm not well, even well, going there. Well, I have well, Peter, Peter, Peter Sellers played Trumpster. Bond in that too. Another Bond. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. 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 So the entire the, when we get when we get to when there's there's a thing I got to explain with the '67 version of Casino Royale is that there were like four directors on that movie. Yeah. Right. And, Okay. I mean, to be fair, there was twenty on The Wizard of Oz, so yeah. What are you gonna do? Yeah. What, what <laughs> what are you gonna do? <laughs> the only guy I know in that movie who was like is like I think John Houston was in it, and he played M, whose real name is McTarry, which Orson is Scott, which is a perfect Bond villain. 
Orson Welles was a Bond villain. He was Le Chief. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Yes, he is. Yeah, in, my God. In that 67 He probably directed version. something, yeah. too. In the... That's right. That's why I thought of him. <laughs> He's just so well, there's under a, head, such there's, heavy makeup. You're like, oh, my God. There's the famous Well, there's the famous thing where him and Peter Sellers didn't get along on the set because yeah, that's right. Um, <laughs> Princess, Princess Anne showed up. Oh, my and, God. And Orson Welles, like, like, they knew each other. And, like, Peter Sellers was like, Tripping over himself to meet, you know, Princess Anne and everything, yeah. and he was just—he was just like pissed off the whole time. Like, if you watch the movie, they're not even the same. They're like they would, like someone's That's like, "I'm true. not sure." It's always close ups, room. you know. Talking it's, to it's a, close arguing ups, with it's this, that, you know. <laughs> yeah. Hey, I'll tell you what, James. You go ahead and do your rankings. Yeah, All right, Bruno, so James Bruno. Okay, so my my five, <laughs> my five star ones are on Her Majesty's Secret Service. There we go. Excellent. Okay, man with the golden gun. Wow. Man with the golden gun. All right, for for your eyes only. Um, I think what 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 was for your eyes only because that to me kind of like made up for Moonraker, and it was Bond Bond being vicious. Cover your you ears, watch fellas. Scene, when, no, the the scene I where know. he kicks <laughs> the guy. No, wait, the guy with the scene where he kicks the guy's car over the cliff. That. Roger oh, yeah, yeah. can do the serious that is actually when that really yeah. well, takes off. and it's a it's good like, spy adventure. Yeah. Bond yeah. just wrecked a car. Yeah. No, no, he he shoots the guy, and the guy's like hanging off the cliff, and he's like, he's just looking at him. He's like, he just takes his foot, just kicks the car off the cliff, and mm-hmm. you're like, oh, I know. It oh. took John McClane driving a car in a helicopter. James just um, kicks a car. For Connery, <laughs> I think it would be for me, um, from Russia with Love, Woo. and Goldfinger. Okay, so those are the five. All right. The, the, the ones oh, I have from the five four stars I would probably give to um live and let die um and the spy who loved me because I didn't see any of the Daniel Craig stuff or the Pierce Brosnan stuff so my shorts my list is going to be kind of short oh really um you haven't seen it Wow, I haven't seen I that. Just kinda, I kind of lost touch. I mean, I did see Golden Eye, which I got to give like a, a a three and a half to. All right. Um, <laughs> you only live twice. I kind of am waving between a three and a two because of the fact that my my dad and me watched it, and to see you know Sean Connery put on that fucking wig and he looks like a like a yeah, really like a it's yeah. a really bad version of Frankenstein. Even before political and, correctness, I was always like, yeah, uh, can we skip yeah. past this part and go to the? <laughs> although, although I will say this, the girl he winds up in the end with is really hot. Um, he was in a bunch always... of Godzilla movies. I remember reading that on a resume. The only saving um, grace of that makeup is uh, there's a the saving dude. grace. Yeah, it's 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 uh, what is it? What's his name? Uh, God, John Wayne is Genghis Khan. That's the only yeah. thing that's a saving grace for that makeup. So. Yeah. Oh my word! <laughs> but at least he didn't, at least he didn't go full tilt Mickey Rooney like in uh, what are you showing Breakfast us? Breakfast at Tiffany's, you know, oh, with the big buck teeth and everything. Oh, God, you know? Mike, that's horrible. Vicky um, Vale, Vicky Vale was in Never Say Never Again. That's who you're talking yeah, about. Yeah, she was in yeah. Never Say Never. Okay, which which I I kind of give like I put Thunderball and Never Say Never in like the three bordering on two. Because of you know the plot, but mm-hmm. the thing I love, I, I would put Never Say Never above it because of two things. Number one, Max von Sydow. I knew you were yeah. going to say that. Yeah. I knew yeah. you were going to say that. He's Blofeld. a perfect Blofeld. Yeah, and <laughs> Klaus Maria Brandauer playing the villain. Excellent villain. Excellent. And then, yeah. and he's not, and he's not someone you hate. You just, you know, he's just doing this for the money. And then the thing I love about that too is you have Bernie Casey in it as Felix. Mm-hmm. And um, who was it? Barbara Carrera as Fat- Fatima Blush. Oh, yeah, who he blows up. Oh. <laughs> out of there. Oh. You know. Yep. Um, and also, also Rowan Atkinson is in that movie. Oh my God, he's one of great he plays, elements. Oh, that's in, right. Yeah. So oh, Johnny yeah. English is connected to James Bond. I knew mm-hmm. it. Wow. Now here's here's the thing. Here's the thing that that we kind of always miss 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 kind of miss over. But how many actors you know? Played in James Bond twice. All right, besides Joe Don Baker. Um, Joe Don Baker. Not counting any stuff. Well, Maud Adams. Um, uh, <laughs> Richard, Richard Kale. Richard yeah. Kale. Richard Kale. Maud Adams. No, no, okay. two different. No, no, guys, two different characters. 
Oh, yeah, no, no. He he meant he meant yeah. Octopussy was also Mod the Adams, of Scarmanga yeah. in Man mm-hmm. with the Golden Gun. Remember? Okay, Andrea, Andrea Anders, and then she played Octopussy. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, Charles Gray. Gray. Sure. Charles Gray, who was in, um, I think he's in Diamonds Are Forever, which I kind of put now at the bottom. Thunderball here. villain is also in Operation Kid Brothers. There you go. Yep. But no, that's <laughs> that, yeah. Um, also, there's two guys you'll, you'll never know. George Baker, who played Tiberius and I Claudius, is in uh, On Her Majesty's Secret Service, and he's also in The Spy Who Loved Me. He mm. plays a rear admiral in both movies. And then you have a guy named. <laughs> The guy who was the voice of Scott Tracy, Shane Rimmer, is in two of the movies. He's in, uh, he plays the Capcom commander in, uh, in uh, You Only Live Twice. And then he plays the American submarine captain in um, Spy. Interesting. Spy Love Spy That is true. Yeah. Another deeper connection, Gerard Butler is the submarine captain in Tomorrow Never Dies. Yeah. <laughs> And now the he's guy, playing his I own think, spy. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I mean, I, I kind of look. So there's some about of the char- seven you can name, but like you say, it's it's not easy to see a lot of returning multi. <laughs> no, but here's something. Fun, here's something. I, I I I always put like you know, I I I'm trying to think like you know like like Moonraker. I put at the bottom of the list because it's just I don't know just. Bond, it, I watched it when I was a kid, and I was like, "Oh wow, you know, he's in space and everything like that." And I had the little <laughs> toy you could play with. Now that I'm older, Did they I'm make like, an action figure of the space station. They make they made an action figure of Bond, of Jaws, of Drax, and they made Holly Goodhead. And <laughs> Nico, <laughs> I love that. Another this great name. Yeah. 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 Funny. I can't believe they don't Holly edit that Goodhead. on TV. They made that Not for kids. Really? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> also, fun they, fact: if, if when you play the Brosnan era uh, Nightfire video game. There's a total Moonraker inspired mission at the very end. Yes. Yeah. Right. <laughs> and mm-hmm. the funny thing was when they Migo put out the Doctor Holly Goodhead, they had they had her as Doctor Holly. <laughs> yes. Oh, that's yep. right. <laughs> oh, and here's some here's another piece of trivia. What two future? Okay. What two future in laws star in a Bond movie together? In-laws. Technically, they're in. They would be in-laws, but they're not. We'll return after these messages. If you like small town mystery, crazy news, and wild history, then the Florida Men on Florida Man podcast is for you. Each week, Josh Mills and Wayne McCarty bring you the absolute best Florida has to offer. So, if you're looking for a show that's safe for the family but funny enough to help you escape everyday life then listen to the Florida Men on Florida Man podcast. That's Florida Men, plural, on Florida Man podcast. Hey, it's Brent Pope, the host of Breakfast with Brent Pope. You've seen me on some of your favorite TV shows saying things like, give it up, Jimmy, you got to sink this putt to win. On Breakfast with Brent Pope, I sit down with guests from the entertainment world and we do it all over breakfast. Or should I say breakfast? Every week on Breakfast, you get inside Hollywood info and tips, great breakfast wrecks and booty debates, most of all, you get the most delightful 30 minutes of your week. So dig in. It's breakfast time. Listen at breakfast.com, Apple Podcasts, or wherever fine podcasts are found. The Jacked Up Review Show podcast is honored to be part of the Blind Knowledge Podcast Network. Join anytime, talk the talk, and enjoy yourselves. There's something enlightening for everyone with this crowd of cool cats. Check them out. We were doing this similarly with Star Wars, where we were like, hey, what Gentilly's is Ian McGregor's uncle. Um, All right. Uh, Lana Wood, who played Plenty O'Toole, was married to, it was, was Natalie Wood's sister. Yeah. Natalie really? was married to Robert Wagner. Robert yeah. Wagner is now married to Jill St. John. Okay. Her and Jill St. John oh, do not get right. They did, they did a photo oh, shoot, Kevin for Bond's 50th <laughs> or 45th or something like that. And they did the shoot, and Jill St. John showed up, and Lana Wood just took off because she was wow. not like Robert Wagner at all. She thinks yeah, Robert right? Wagner was a Christian. And remember, Robert Wagner was number two. They lost him. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Speaking, speaking of different times, by the way, and not editing things out, uh, my <laughs> seventh grade class, they showed Octopussy. 
So no. Yeah. <laughs> Seventh grade. Yeah. Oh, that's, that's awesome. a great teacher. Oh, wait, wait. Hang you on. have an awesome four, teacher. <laughs> four. In that four bracket. I'd How many parents complain? <laughs> I'd put 1967's Casino Royale. I'm sorry. I love that movie. It's funny to watch. No, it's I totally do too. Fun. I like the. I, I, I get like it. It's not for everyone, but it is fun. Like everyone should watch it's it at a, least it's once. It's a mess like the Marvels was. The, 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 oh! Uh, I, 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 <laughs> I, 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 Shots fired! Wow. Jesus! <laughs> I, I love that movie. <laughs> yeah, and, uh, the Marvel it's got was kind score. of a Marvel movie parody. There you go. No. It's got a great score. It's got I a got great a score question. Point. I think I know the answer to, but I'm not sure. What? Who's the only singer of a Bond film to appear on camera in the film during the during the song? Madonna? During the song. Oh, during the title sequence during where the, the song is being sung. Sheena Easton. Gladys Knight. Sheena Easton, 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 Sheena yeah. Easton yeah. and For Your Eyes Only. I think Gladys Knight. Oh, too. that's right. She is in that. Oh, no, yeah. I wonder, yeah, yeah. I wonder if any of the singers <laughs> appear in the movies. I, I think that might be. Yeah, other time. than Madonna making a cameo as a different person, I can't think of any. Did she do I got one for you. Who's in Die Another Day? Who's the only person to do a Bond theme song three times? Shirley Bassey. Uh, Shirley, Shirley Bassey. Man, look at you. Well, of course you know. You, 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 you know your podcast. <laughs> Shirley, Shirley Bassey actually did four, um, but one of them wasn't used. So she did one for oh, Thunderball man. called uh, Kiss Kiss Bang Bang. Okay. And uh, they used the theme from that throughout the which movie, is, which is really it, Oh, Shane Black is totally Bond inspired. Isn't that what yeah. James Bond is, is referred to in Japan as Mr. Kiss Kiss Bang Bang? So. <laughs> yeah, I, I yeah, wouldn't be insane. surprised. That'd be amazing. Yeah. Um, yeah. He's probably so, Mr. Sparkle. Sparkle. Uh, uh, so you mentioned Marvel. Would you accept Benedict Cumberbatch? I know he's overused. Would he be okay as a Bond villain? Uh, as a Bond uh, villain, I think he'd do a pretty good job. Yeah. 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 Absolutely. yeah. He's getting up there in age, so I I can't pose him as a Bond villain. <laughs> Has he ever played a villain? Yeah. Uh, he played Khan in the. He yeah, played. Said he was in the way, new uh, Star Trek movie. Oh, well, that, know, but yeah, he also he also played. That. Yeah, well, of course he ta- did. Time. Okay. He also played uh, Julian Assange in the WikiLeaks movie. Speaking. <laughs> yeah. Speaking of uh, Marvel guys, if Chris Evans could do a British accent, he's oh. got the look to play James Bond. <laughs> you know, Captain yeah. America turned Bond. You know what? Yeah. So then he'll have to say Britain's ass. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I can't I'll have to go from Captain America to Captain Britain. Yeah. Captain Britain. Yeah. <laughs> no, 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 yes. Hey, hey, maybe they maybe they froze um Daniel Craig, so <laughs> no. No, not, no, no. they didn't they didn't freeze his acid, so he'll be good money yeah. waste for a while. Um he got blowed up. He got blowed up. So um <laughs> I I I'm gonna let uh Tom go next. <laughs> Yeah, I took a slightly different take with that. For me, I a dirty martini. I didn't. I haven't. I haven't seen all the movies, so I can't rank all the what? movies. My <laughs> thought was, um, I I saw the ones from like seventies into um, early nineties. I saw I saw them all, and uh, so so <laughs> yeah, I, for me that was the golden age. However, what I focused on more was the music because mm-hmm. the theme songs were the theme songs were what really caught my ear. And then we say, yeah, I want to go see this. Or, yeah, this is a James Bond theme. Or, nah, this isn't so much. So I've done I've done a, a top seven and bottom seven. Yeah, because double oh seven. Ah, the worst. Nice. And he just did his Jeff one Goldblum. Open to your top seven. We'll see. Oh, man. <laughs> all right. Go ahead. Um, I knew you were going to see seven, Number seven <laughs> is All Time High, Rita Coolidge. Yeah. It's a nice song, but it doesn't quite fit. Yeah. And there's something yeah. absolutely yeah. there's an element missing hmm. same thing with number six for your eyes only oh, great so, uh, oh. decent song oh. but just didn't quite oh, no. didn't <laughs> <quite hurt. laughs> deep hurting <laughs> oh, oh there's more the at, at, least, right. at, at least he didn't That's mention right. the uh, some of the recent ones like the Sam Smith one oh god <laughs> yeah, um, number Shane five for me. Go ahead. I'm sorry, Tom. Number Go five, ahead. Skyfall. She's yeah. a great singer. I do. No like doubt about it. She but... has a talent, but that song just sucked. <laughs> no, fair enough. It it did not sound like it. It should be, and she should sing it. It, it should have gone to somebody else. 
Mm. And on the side note, we mentioned Sam Smith. I think she should have done that song. That's me. Mm. Mm. Number four, no, to Die Another Day. <laughs> oh, oh, thank you. It's yeah. so bad. Yeah. And again, Paul Oakenfold has done so much great electronic music, but it's like it just felt like he wasn't even looking at the screen while he was composing that music. It's like this does not fit the scene. Yeah. I can barely hear what people are saying in the nightclub. <laughs> I can't even yeah, remember it. So yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. Shall we play a few bars of it? <laughs> no, uh, no. I just, I, I've already seen <laughs> it's a Geneva Convention. <laughs> <laughs> right. That that would be a war crime against. <laughs> well, it is played while he is being tortured in the North Korean yeah. right? So man, actually, like, it actually is represented. <laughs> why does this campy music uh, played during a second part of it? Because it's being tortured, tortured to them. <laughs> Uh, are they, the are they torturing him with the music? Maybe yes, somehow I the North Koreans so. have some scorpions, but we won't get into that. Yeah, so. Oh, God. <laughs> Kim Jong-un is such a bastard. <laughs> three. <laughs> Number three, The World is Not Enough by Garbage. Hmm. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I actually like that. Uh, no, that I like it. Uh, it's better than the show, Crow. That, <laughs> that I, I hear, I've heard it, and it's like, you only can think of the cackney to it as a title. <laughs> Number two, No Time to Die, Billie Eilish. Yeah. I listened to that today oh. just to kind of prepare myself. <laughs> and I'm still not sure what it is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sorry. It's very and number one different. on my worst list, and this is going to be controversial in some cases, I know. Number one for me is Goldfinger by Shirley Bassey. <laughs> wow. Are you oh, fucking my. sick? Oh, God. <laughs> I'm going to tell you why. That is We're about to have a mutiny one here. Of the <laughs> That's like the. Oh. I want to just gold gold that with oh, Cheryl Crow. The brass is. Oh, uh, I, I the know my brother is good. The my... song itself is good. The Shirley Bassey, bless her heart, she turned it campy, and not in a good way. Oh. <laughs> I know. Dude. I, would all... <laughs> I think no, it's like, strong. Wait, I think wait, it's wait, sexy. Be... I think it's one of the greatest themes. It is a cool. Yeah. Thing. Can but we all be I... silent oh. for one minute? What in the fucking San Juan Hill are you thinking, buddy? <laughs> <laughs> I think about going. I'm thinking about going to my to my. To my top seven now. That's what I'm thinking. Uh, right, so oh, okay. Let's see what you got there. I thought I was hurting, uh, I thought I was hurting and then I looked at Philip and I was like, man, I feel his pain. I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> you know, I was, I was having an aneurysm. Yeah, it's all man. good. <laughs> we all have contraries in the family. Um, but I, I yep. notoriously... And now, this is only, also going to be... Uh, I, we, we, I bet you we all have family members we can't watch these movies with. Like, my mom can't stand it, but my... Oh, I couldn't watch these with my grandmother. Right, but uh, my, my grandmother, my, my grandmother, my grandmother would say he's just sleeping around, isn't he? Oh my <laughs> word! My, it's funny, and, actually. Everyone in my family is is a pretty big Bond fan. I happen to be oh, really? like a few levels up from them, but <laughs> everyone loves James Bond. That's we used why. to have uh, my, marathons of it on the holidays and things. My brother would make fun of the Tom Jones theme as well as the title. He's like <laughs> Thunderball. I'm like, get out of here, Beavis. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Thunderball. He <laughs> <laughs> walked. My, where mom, others walk. <laughs> my mom was a big James Bond fan. She, her favorite was Connery. There you uh, go. Yeah. I think I know where Tom's coming from on Goldfinger. Enunciation. <laughs> oh, oh yeah, my Lord. Lord. <laughs> <laughs> Was that the part? I think oh, I got God. it. I think I got it. I never thought <laughs> oh, it that way, but I, I know where you're coming from. All right. Your yeah. top seven. Now nope. for the. Now Jesus. for the top seven. This one's also going to be a controversial pick, but I it's bet. mine, and I'm gonna, I'll die it's on this. This is your hill. list. We're so all this, controversial. Starting with, start with the seventh out of right. seven, right? Because it refuses to do. This is my top seven. Okay, top. Okay. The man with the golden gun by Lulu. Thank you. Yeah, that it that in of itself is a great song. She does what Shirley Bassey tried to do. Oh my! But I think kick it up a notch or two. Yeah, she okay. made a Bond theme oh. like that had that camp factor, but it didn't over it didn't overpower the song itself. Apples and oranges. Yeah. The lyrics are risky as risque as hell too. So. Oh yeah, yeah. 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 Yes. <laughs> I like that. That's a great. Way. <laughs> oh yeah, that's a great way. Yeah. Did, was it, did somebody tell me Jimmy Page played on that record or something like that? What? Interesting. Some, no, that you know, he, that makes he, sense. Played a, he played on the Tom Jones. He played on It's Not Unusual. I keep think 
but I keep thinking for some reason, like somebody from he played on Goldfinger. Big... All right, he was a session player with the John Barry Orchestra. Yeah, oh. he plays on uh, Gloria, and yeah. he apparently shares Tom uh, Tom's opinion. He said the full orchestra sounded absolutely amazing, and then Shirley Bassey arrived. Damn. Yeah. What's up with these discs? <laughs> And if you if you're gonna argue with Jimmy Page, Jesus. <laughs> oh, okay. Oh, let's move on. Let's not be rupturing the waters here. Let's <laughs> number number six. Nobody does it better by Carly Simon. There you go. Oh, that, I wouldn't put it that yeah. low. That's a great song in and of itself. The fact that it's there we go. Now we're talking. That's my number one. Plus, it, yeah, it's it, got it was a, amazing oh. titles behind it too. So yeah. Yeah. The horn, the horns are great on that too. I love it. Yeah. With the echo. Yeah, the horns are always powerful. Norman I think Hamlet that's a record. The best job. That's a requirement for Bond. <laughs> Marvin, you can thank Marvin Hamlish for doing that shit because <laughs> he did. <laughs> that's right. He did, the, he did the rest of the score, or most of it. Yeah. Nice. Number five. This is this is more of my personal groove. So it's uh, "License to Kill" by Glass Knight. I love that yeah. one. Yeah. Oh, very horns. sexy. And yeah. you know it's a bond. Okay, so to answer my question, alone. there is a singer who does appear in the movie. No, that's true. I think she does. No, no, but not in so. the not in the opening credits, but as a character in the movie. Let's see. I thought I, I think she does. That ah. Tom Jones. You know they did. You know the Proctologist Association of America did a cover of Goldfinger. It's called Coldfinger. <laughs> 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 Paul Tom Jones, Finger. Tom Jones would have made a good bond now that I think about it. Who? Uh, Mars Attacks. <laughs> wow. Yeah, <that's> right. <laughs> oh, yeah. You have to look for it, you know. Anyway. Yeah, no. I was, never mind. I was thinking of something else. All right. My bad. Number four. Okay. We have all the time in the world. I oh, really am strong. Wow. Yes. Go. Oh, okay. Good. That good. Is, good. That is. I mean, not only do you have uh, Louis Louis at his prime in that song, but just everything <laughs> works with it. It is as close to a perfect bomb theme as you can get, except for number three, "The Living Daylights" by Aha. Hmm. Wow, that for me, I like that one too. That has the undercurrent of the bomb theme in it. I thought you were going to Duran Duran. <laughs> nope, Sorry. that's number two. Duran Duran, a people <laughs> kill. They number have two. They had the best use of that. Da, 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 da. They had the best use of that John and Barry the, chord progression, and it is. Oh, and they yeah. made it their own. They made it the James Bond theme, but it made it their James Bond theme. And the video and, was amazing too. If you watch it, it yes, it was. Yeah. Yes. Huh. And now number one. And if anybody wants to disagree with me, you're you're welcome to do it, but. My number one, Live and Let Die by Paul McCartney and Wayne. That's a great one. Yeah, that's that's quintessential. Yeah. Why would anyone theme. disagree? <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, that's got me but, and I'll tell you, I, I tell you the reason why I put it at number one. It is certainly a Bond theme, but we're still talking about it today. It's yeah. still in, in heavy rotation today. Yeah. We're talking about 70. We're, we're going on, in some cases, I think we're getting close to 50 years. Yep. And it's still being played. That tells me that that transcends and the Bond franchise. And what blows my mind about that too, Tom, is that you got to realize all the people before that who were doing those songs were people that were kind of like top 40 pop vocalists. Mm-hmm. McCartney is a rock star doing a Bond theme, so that puts him... That, that put the game, that put the that put the, the 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 you know everybody could you know be like oh shit wait he's doing it we could do a Bond song we could throw a we could do you know that's why you got Carly Simon that's why you got uh, Lulu that's why you had um you know you know all these people people were now like, okay, wait the rock stars said, hey if McCartney can do it we can all do it yep Duran mm-hmm. Duran so yep Duran yeah. Duran. And I mean, uh, like before that was was Tom Jones, yeah. Oh, God. <laughs> yeah, but I have to say, I didn't. Thunderball is a personal favorite because I know it was Tom Jones, but Thunderball. it didn't fit on the list. And yeah. so, um, isn't that the one that kind of? 
Yeah, he's had better pops singles on his own than that. But is it yeah. good? <laughs> yes. I, I gotta see what yeah, you're not a Tom Jones fan, I'm taking it. I am a <laughs> fan, that's why I'm saying. Why is it not on the list? <laughs> oh, God, there's yeah. there's there's an honorable mention, Tom, I would put in there. Burke Bacharach's theme to Casino Royale. Um because it's just it's just funny to listen to, you know, because it's like he's always on. Oh well, if you're gonna do that, then we got to put Chris Carnell from Soundgarden's Casino Royal theme. Yeah, but <laughs> no, I'm just saying, I'm just saying, like that song captures the quirkiness of the '60s. Yeah. You know, that is true. Yeah. You know, yeah, I'll, are you talking I'll even throw in another on moment. Yeah, he's talking in. the '67. Yeah. Are, are you talking um, the instrumental theme, or is there a, a vocal theme too? There's a vocal at the end okay. where it says. Seven people run to a casino around and then it kicks into uh it goes six are going to a heavenly spot, one is going to a place where it's terribly hot, and he goes bah, 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 bah. Oh, James Bond double oh seven. If they ever did a sitcom, they should use that theme. <laughs> and we were gonna do that, we might as well throw in Moby's uh, yes. electronic re- yeah, 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 remake yeah, 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 of the yeah, yeah. of the John yeah. Barry theme. Bond. James Bond. Just the way yeah. he has the rock inserted in there, bing, 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 with the gadget noises. Yeah, bing. I mean that. It, it makes you want to run down a highway and do a workout. Yeah, but, um, but um, no, nothing <laughs> will top the the John Barry theme. Period. End of story. All the others will be yeah. inferior, but there will be some that will that will get as close to the mark as humanly possible. So. That's it. And now back to the countdown. <laughs> I love the fact that John Barry, when that when that theme kicked off, right, and it goes and you see the the, the scope eye go yep. across the screen, and it's following totally. doubles it, and all he just turns around and goes pow, and you see the blood come down on a. That's as R rated as any of them got. Where you're just like, jeez, they can do that. <laughs> I, I think I mean, that was gruesome. it is gruesome. Yeah, yeah I think that's a great way of putting it. Is 007 being the perfect gentleman who will kill no matter what? I've seen a great write up when comparing him and Jason Bourne, and I mean he does hint at it in his own self. He's like, I'm a hitman. What happens to work yeah. for the British government? <laughs> He's a street fighter while. Some of these other guys are just disillusioned soldiers and everything. <laughs> the, the one thing I loved about For Your Eyes Only um, was the beginning. The beginning I loved about is the beginning because he goes to visit Teresa's grave. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And yeah. he gets in the helicopter and yeah. Blofeld is, Mr. Bond, you're going for a ride, you know. <laughs> and he finds, and he takes over the helicopter and he drops Blofeld down the friggin' chimney. I remember yes. being in the movie theater and everybody cheering. Oh, nice! You know, because it, but to me, when you talk about James Bond being a su- like a pseudonym for somebody, like you know, he's he, it's a spy. For, I always say this: the Lazenby character, basically, and and we talked about this one time. Lazenby was told, "Don't do those movies anymore." If I'm right in saying this, by his agent, yeah, he said the, the movies that that are going to be big or stuff like Easy Rider and stuff like right. that. Stuff. And James Bond is going to be just a hack. Because you know, how just... dare we be hippies? <laughs> yeah, I, I know I know he made the choice to not do more. Yeah. Yeah. But, yeah. Bad agents. We'll do that. And don't forget, Connery has a payback scene in Diamonds of Forever for his wife getting killed as well. Right. So that's yeah. as close as we get to them being the same person. <laughs> Crossing over. 
Uh, yeah, but well, in Lee's defense, in Lee's defense, he did play a character on The Master. Yes. Oh my God. <laughs> yes. Oh God. An undefined spy, right? And uh, now you're making yeah. me wish Lee Van Cleef could have been a James Bond villain. Um, yeah. <laughs> it also starred the late great David McCallum. Yeah. True. Yep. Well, in, judging Chico. by the way, judging by the way he was petting that gerbil, he'd, he'd make a better Mr. Burns, I think. <laughs> Oh. You know, Lee Van Cleef. There you go. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, Gil. Do you know how to be a ninja, Smithers? <laughs> so, Gil, we'll, we'll, we'll let you finish off the rankings now. <laughs> oh, I am I suck at rankings, so I'm just going to go gonna through it. He's going to morph it, ladies and gents. I, I, well, I was going to go through and just mention the ones that stood out to me, okay. maybe. That You're five. Okay. <laughs> uh, Goldfinger. Um, mm. for a few reasons. One, that was the introduction of the Aston Martin. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Um, and there's no, there's no getting around. I mean, Pussy Galore is one hell of a name for a femme. Oh yeah. <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's one I'm never gonna forget. Um, and then Odd Job is a henchman. Oh yeah. He's also a character yeah. I'd never. And, and yeah, he's great to play as in the video games even more. Like you will die instantly. Hard you to throw that hat. Yeah, hard to hit him. Yeah. <laughs> My father was friends with a guy he worked with, Sus Kawamoto. And a lot of people don't realize Harris, him and Harold Sakata were in the same internment camp together. And what? The thing Yeah. My dad's friends Seuss and Harold Sakata were in the same internment camp during World War Two. Jeez. And mm. a lot of people don't realize Harold Sakata actually was an Olympic weightlifting champion. I did hear about that. Didn't he do wrestling also? No, well he no no that's that's I think I I think he might have done wrestling, but I keep thinking that's pro- Professor Toru Tanaka uh, oh, okay. who looked like odd job. But um Harold Sakata was actually like like he, like there's I have pictures of him with the Olympic medals around his chest. Sweet. He was a powerful dude, yeah. Yeah. It's a shame he kind of was restricted to just kind of B-movies after just Goldfinger, and you would think he would have probably get some other imposing stuff. Like, I see him as, like, a Shogun, or, you know. Um, but it, and, or as the Master. Or as the Master, or a Diplomat, or something. Mm-hmm. It's like, no, he just had all those heavy roles, like random punk getting killed. <laughs> He's in an awful William Shatner movie, if you ever look up. <laughs> so he was in a William Shatner movie. He was in a William Shatner movie. Yeah, playing a <laughs> ra- random asshole who gets killed. Yeah. Um. <laughs> and then that's the for, that's the name for an unfortunate Bond villain. Random oh asshole. man, random asshole, random asshole getting shot. Yeah. Anyway, I'll let you go. <laughs> uh, it's just on her secret service because yeah. that's the poor Bond gets married and loses his wife in the movie and it's yeah. also got Diana Rigg. Oh Diana yeah. Riggs, yeah. Yeah. Top yeah. Bond girl. Yeah. <laughs> Don't you find it kind of weird that her and Patrick McNee were were in Bond movies together? Yeah, that's because right. Patrick, Which one was he in though? I can't he was in he was in Review to a Kill. Right. He was the He played the show man. for Yeah. Yeah. He, played he was the show standing for in for Q. <laughs> yeah. He was good friends with Roger Moore. That's why they have so much, you know, great chemistry there. That is yeah. true. Yeah. Yeah. He's I like, like the one. only source of comedy. And it's funny. When people tell me the horror stories about Grace Jones, I'm like, yeah, that makes sense. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'd be intimidated too. But to be fair, that's where Dolph Lundgren and her met. So. <laughs> Without that movie, we don't have Dolph Lundgren's amazing action career. And then uh, "Live and Let Die" mainly because of the song. Mm-hmm. That's that's about what I can remember from it. Boat chases, dude. Oh, <laughs> oh yeah, well, is that that's the one? Is that the one that's Louisiana? That's the one with the uh, yeah, Louisiana. with the ship. <laughs> yeah, that's with a great James James play. Yeah. Uh, the Bond girl in that is actually Deep. pretty strong, even though they kill her off. But yeah. Rosie, Rosie, yes, yep, that's right. But if you're looking for the guy who played the the sheriff. It was uh, Clifton James as J.D. Culpepper. Okay. Yeah, and he's Debbie played the Pepper. same character in other movies, too. Yeah. Same kind of character. Yeah. I love the... You know, if you're going to do that, I would almost say you have to... I wish you would uh, cast Struggle Martin in that role. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh. 
<laughs> what we have here oh, is a failure. Is failure to communicate. <laughs> I'm sorry, <laughs> Mr. Kananga. You sounded much taller on the radio. Um, <laughs> to be fair, those Paul Newman spy movies are as close as he gets to playing James Bond. Oh yeah. Colin Curtin and uh, the Macintosh Man. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hey, I'm I'm sorry. I'm gonna have to bow out. I gotta I gotta go to bow a different out. podcast. So. <laughs> hey, All right. it's great having you on here. Anything you want to promote before yeah. you take off? Or uh, yeah, everybody, um, go check out uh, all my work on asapimagination.com. I write a comic series, and I got a new novel out as well. So you can go check all that out. Perfect. And uh, Comic yeah, Crusaders I, Network. If you guys want to check out some fun blogs, just about yeah. every kind of geekdom has been given a tribute. In fact, uh, I, I run a show over there called CinemaCrusaders.com where we talk about movies yes. that have to be at least 10 years old. Um, any of you are always welcome to come on and uh, come promise us. We are, we are actually on Friday. Tomorrow, we're talking about uh, Brain Dance, funnily mm. enough, starring uh, Natalie Wood and Robert Wagner. So. Oh, oh, yeah. <laughs> Yep. What was it called? Brain, brain dance. dance. Or brainstorm, excuse me, not brain. Oh, okay, yeah. That was, that was Christopher okay. Walken in that. Yes, yeah, yes, Christopher yes. Walken. Yeah. Song. I'd not love Robert to talk Walken. about that with hey, you. Hey, don't yeah. don't be sniffing me on my filmography, <laughs> man. <laughs> yes. Yes. I know it's thinking, baby. And don't then um up. we we do this thing where we, we we have to include an actor, not the actor that got us the movie, but a different actor or actress to get us to the next movie. So I'm picking the next movie. So next Friday, we're doing a comedy, uh, just a completely stupid movie. We're doing Real Men, starring James Belushi and John Ritter. So yes, oh, oh god, god, that was a great movie. <laughs> yeah, so such uh, a wild movie. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> uh, talking about spy movies. There, there's one for you. So you could do a summary of like all the failed like uh, buddy <laughs> movies that no one talks about. Everything from Renegades to that one with Gene Hackman and. <laughs> Yep. Oh. <laughs> so uh thank you so much for having me on guys this was a blast sorry i got Good to go. you here, bro. Yep. yeah thank bye, you bye everybody absolutely yeah. a thousand monica belushi's to you um <laughs> and woo <laughs> okay uh moonraker i know it's uh cheesy i know it's over the top but it was the first one i saw in the theater i actually well actually it was a drive-in so that's holds a, a a place in my heart because it was the first one I saw in the theater. Oh, good. Um, yeah, Living Daylights. That was the one with Dalton is introduced, and that was probably I think everybody might have been discussing it earlier about you know it was probably the more violent Bond. I would think. Yeah. But yeah, is. but I I kind of liked it. Oh, good. Uh, Golden Eye. I remember that more for the game. Yeah. Oh, man. And then uh, I'll end it with uh, they finally got the rights. They've been trying for years to get the rights to do Casino Royale. You know, it had been done by, you know, they sold the rights originally and it was put on TV it was with an American actor playing Bond. Um, and then they did the Casino Royale spoofy type of movie, which I enjoyed that one. But I was glad to see that they were finally able to, you know, get it for the Bond franchise and and put it in and there. They, and Gil, when they did that, they kind of kept it true to true to the book. Because I remember there's a scene where he he's Bond is getting tortured, and he uses a uh, Le Chief uses a yes um, carpet uh, yeah, a carpet yeah he's whipping him balls. practically, and you're like Ooh. on his like on his balls, and I was like holy shit, and they I remember I had the book of Casino Royale, and they were showing us. I was like, are you fucking kidding? Me? You know. I never looked at my mom's carpet beater the same way again. <laughs> <laughs> hey, ooh. And then I wonder why dad always hurt in the morning. <laughs> no, um. <laughs> BMI. Uh, Jeez. <laughs> and I, I, I definitely don't look for that on Google. You'll have to clear your browsing history. <laughs> 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 it is a great You're scene, t- though, because he's totally it is. vulnerable. He's he's like, and what's funny know, is he's looks... about to die and loses what makes him a man. On rewatch, him, watching it, the yeah. Shifri looks even more insecure at him, which is you know, having listened to more mental health and fitness podcasts, like you know, insecurity is like the source of everything—bullying, you know, villainy, everything—and so 
it's so funny how even when he has the power, he still feels a little upstaged by Bond because Bond can take so many punches and torture. Yeah. And yeah, like Shifre, he's intimidated by him so much during the entire card game because, you know, Bond keeps going even though he's been poisoned. <laughs> you know, it's, he can't <laughs> stop him. Yeah. He can't stop. And even when I, he's I do feel with losing well, and his that, that's, manhood. That, uh, that's which what I like. I would immediately be like, hey, no, I'm. I'll give you whatever information. Right. You just get that away from me, and uh, we'll, I'm out. You know, just, yeah. <laughs> but, um, but that's what I liked about. Yeah. That's what I liked about Spectre. The various montages where they were on the train, because they just showed you how he was back to his old sex fueled, you know, violent rages. <laughs> like he can't, he's basically in one, one place or the other. He's either in the bedroom or he's out and about getting the shit kicked out of him <laughs> before he finally gets the upper hand. You know, it's just. I don't know how he has a straight face. He's been punched in the face so many times. Yeah. He had a great plastic surgeon. Oh, oh the, there you go. That just solved us our whole Bond theory. It works for Ryder theory. <laughs> he I, has a plastic I, will say this, <laughs> I will say this about Bond when, you know, it was it was more and then, you know, lazy me and then Connor's. More was, Connor was very serious. He'd always tell those one-liners and you'll be like, ha, 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 boom. More did more comedic stuff in some of the movies. Like he I brought remember, more, yeah, he, he brought, brought more, more humor. Yeah. yeah, he brought more humor into it. And the thing I loved about it was like the last one that he did, which is a view to the kill. You knew he was getting tired of doing the movie of the team. You know, you know, he was in his fifties at that point, and you know, you know, he, you're kind of watching. You're like, okay, we know he's going to end up with Tanya Roberts. But it's like you know, it's finding out your your dad is banging someone had to do it. Banging your you know, your dad's banging your your prom date from ten years before. You know, you're like, oh Jesus Christ! Yeah. Oh, that's why um, Moore got out at that time. He was sixty. He's like, what's going on yeah. here? I'm way he too did, old for these people. Have you guys ever seen the movie that he did during James Bond called Folks? I've heard of it. Yes, yeah, yeah. That and. Uh, Escape from Athena. Yeah, he was just he was, the, he was the king of just being in those men on a mission movies. Uh, what was the one they did with Lee Marvin? Shout at the devil. Yes. Yep. Yeah. yeah. And There's I always got that mixed up with Athena. But yeah, folks was cool because he and Gregory Peck are doing another Guns and Navarone kind of. Wait, was Gregory Peck? No, Gregory. No, that was the Sea Wolves. That's what that I'm thinking. Oh, okay, we'll see. So there you go. The Four Sea Wolves <laughs> was was Niven and Peck getting back together with trevor howard and they were do it was like they were it was called the the, the light horse of calcutta it was called the sea wolves because i remember andrew yep. mclaughlin directed it mm-hmm. and then what happened was is that he does this movie called folks yes. um north sea hijack north sea hijack and basically, yep. the, the character was that two f's to begin the title yeah. right yeah, yeah. <laughs> double and, f um, <laughs> he's i think i've seen the trailer with, for that yeah oh i Anthony Perkins is just creepy in that movie. Oh, okay. But the th- the thing I love about we'll that say is that like, about any movie with Anthony Perkins. <laughs> the thing in that movie is that he's so anti James Bond. He's you know he lives alone. He loves the, he loves his cats. He yeah. doesn't like to be bothered. Mm-hmm. You know he 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 doesn't like he doesn't like women. Which I think you know just basically I think from what we understand he was married before and then mm-hmm. his wife left him or something like that. I mean it's just it's just he was totally playing against type in that movie. Yeah, and I love that movie. I, 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 you know, it's very it was one of those movies that very underrated, and very, very good to listen, you know, to watch, you know, and you know, and, and Connery did those movies after he did. You only live, Cho- you only live twice. He did, you know, the the hill. And he did uh, I promise we'll talk about the wild geese in the future too. <laughs> you know the wild. You know, None Connery's Roger movies were pretty good. You know, yep. he did. Uh, what did he do? He did. He did the hill. He yes. did um oh, Find Madness. Mm-hmm. He did uh you know, he did he did a couple of movies and then they were like, Okay, we need you back. Why Glazen B's not coming back? Okay. You know. <laughs> yeah. uh, he, he was gone and then came back for um Never Say Never Again. Never Say Never Again. Yeah. Yeah. That's and that true. was, that oh, yeah, was he came back twice. The man who would be king was in between those two, I think. He was in that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, he Touch was... might have been a little later. Untouchables is eighty nine ninety. Uh, never seen never yeah. was yeah eighty seven. So, uh, never seen never is eighty three. 
Meteor is 79, 1980. Wrong is right is 1981, 82 maybe. Uh, he does the Anderson tapes. He does the Offense. He does uh, what was the one that he did that? Oh, uh, he did he did uh, the Molly Maguire's. Right. So pretty much. Yeah. Costume dramas and Sidney Lumet, and then you know back to Lumet later. What and, year was Zardoz? Uh, 1975. 1975. Yeah. 1975. Everybody... He also voiced the dragon character in a movie, too. Dragon Dragonheart. Heart. Dragonheart. 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 And they actually had the CGI in his face. So. <laughs> oh. And let's not forget his role as Ramirez in Highlander. 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 Yeah, come back from part two. <laughs> yeah. I can I was... show me off I again. want to just be a little bit Ramirez. Yeah, I was. I'm an Egyptian playing a Spaniard who's got a Scottish accent. <laughs> you tell me the fuck up in that, and I'll tell you what I'm doing in this movie. To be fair, he travels all around the globe, so I would probably be confused too. But yeah, they do his character more justice on the show. But you're just like, man. But I, I did finally get the ultimate cut of part two of Highlander, and that is definitely the way to go. Compared to okay, oh. um, there's a movie he did. Where he played King Arthur. Oh, uh, oh, one first uh, night you played. Oh, Robin Hood. No, 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 no. no, no. no yeah, yeah. Hood, it's it first, was um, it's first not, night. Uh, first, yeah, night. first night, and okay. he does appear in the ninety-one Robin Hood, but also he plays Robin Hood. Robin and Marion. Yeah, yeah. And That's why. Yeah. I, I played that at a party once, back. and everyone yeah. hated me for a month because they didn't realize <laughs> there was a tragic ending. So. Yeah. There's an example I of still, trying to figure out what movies for fit the right kind of crowd. <laughs> we're 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 in the movie theater. And we're watching First Night. Me and my friends. And we start doing Monty Python and the Holy Grail. <laughs> tell me, sir, tell me how to tell me some better. <laughs> how do sheep splatters predict earthquakes? And yes, and that's how my leaves. How we take the earth to be banana shaped? You know. Oh my word! This morning is amazing. Tell me again how steep you have can protect. There's a missed lights. opportunity. Sean Connery and the Pythons. So that would have been great. Um, um he was in um Time Bandits. Time Bandits. Yeah, it's oh, as close right. as yeah. we get. Yeah. In fact, in fact, the funny thing is Terry Gilliam's writing the script. He says, Warrior takes off the helmet and it's Sean Connery. That and was like, in the like, script. That was in the script, yeah. That yeah. <laughs> That's good. Wow. There's um two Meta. There's two instances where they break the fourth wall. That I, there's got to be more, but Lazenby does it. He says, you "Didn't get this with the other guy or something like that." Oh, just didn't have to the other, other guy. And yeah. also, there's a joke about shaken not stirred with. Are you? Are you must be kidding me? I don't want that with Daniel Craig's Bond. Yeah, I think like he does do hand. that, and you're like, yeah. And they're, okay. they're saying, audience, you guys get this right, but there's got to be more cases of that. Ah. Uh, they kind of break. Maybe I think not. Dalton Laser had is the strongest one. You're right. I think Dalton yeah. had one line saying, "I'm not doing that again this time." But it's more. They're more kind of vague. Like they're just okay. Does he do that wanna... in the in the, the first one? He does. I think so. He says something like at his like after his training, saying that's not how we do things anymore, or something like that. <laughs> but you can take that anyway, kind of. <laughs> Yeah, there's now, that scene in Skyfall uh, with Q, and he says, we don't really go into that anymore. Yeah, like Q pen. goes all bureaucrat, and he's like, okay. nope, not anymore. <laughs> oh, that's right. So, yeah, they're, they're, they're probably... It's always they're minor. Before. It's always dry, so it's you have quick. to... It's so quick, yeah. You have to catch them. <laughs> yep. there are some, there's some great uh, people that we haven't acknowledged in the movies that really did it, did it well. Um, the you know, villains kind of especially the, love to change the villains, scenery. Robert but Carl and always, Christopher Lee especially are just yeah. like saying, you think you can kill me? No, you can't. <laughs> yeah. But Lois Maxwell is money penny for all those years. And all I remember oh is gosh. in... That's so cute. In, I in, read uh, somewhere... I'm, I'm sorry. Um, I read somewhere that uh, Christopher Lee was uh, related to Ian Fleming, I think. He's a cousin. They were yeah. cousins. Yeah. Yeah. Ooh, and cousins. they didn't... St I can't remember. Did they serve in the same battalion? No. Yeah. No, 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 no. No, no. Yeah, but, but they uh, still was, did dangerous was, saboteur kind of stuff. Ian yeah. Fleming was a naval intelligence officer, but yeah, the scenes he never. Hence really why he wrote Bond that way. Yeah, yeah, but Christopher Lee did kill people, right? Yeah. 
Oh, that is why he gets Lord of the Rings. So right. is there a way that he might have been based off Christopher Lee in a way? There's um, some intimation. I that, like that. But, yeah. yeah. But really, it's based off of Ian Fleming's. It's They described it as an autobiography of a dream. Like what Ian Fleming wanted to do during the war. Yeah. He wanted to do as a spy, but yeah. was not really able to do. Like he went into a casino. And Hence why uh, this is a guy's fantasy. You know, it's, exactly. Mm-hmm. It's a fantasy. He what went he could to a casino technically do. During World War II. <laughs> And um, he didn't win at gambling. He played some Nazi officers, got cleaned out, oh, then again, got cleaned out again. So he wasn't <laughs> very Bondian. But the there's a way they could James Bond would win. There's a way they gambling. could rebrand Bond is if they showed him as a World War II intelligence officer. That would be there's fun been if they some, didn't. Um, well, there's actually there was actually a mini series about Ian Fleming's life. Uh, I did see that, that one. Delve yeah. into that. Yeah, with Dominic Chase Cooper. Chase Connery played him. Oh, but but Jesus there was one. I, I think he's talking about a newer one, Dominic Cooper. It was yes. about the life of Fleming. Yeah. All right, but yes, I I think I did see that one. <laughs> so that was kind of the joke. Is like, hey, let's take the son of Sean Connery, who's also a director, and have him play. So you're playing Jane, You're playing Ian Fleming. Yeah, Dad. All right. Let me tell you something. When a woman asks, when a reporter asks you, what do you think about a woman? You just say they need a good slap now and then. Dad, oh my not... God. <laughs> yeah. I was yeah. about throwing... I just saw that. That's, that was on Instagram or something. That didn't Everyone probably... loves sharing that. It's like, we, we've talked about it before when we were joking about garbage person or not. It's like, yeah, yeah. Love you to death as an actor, Connery, but I would slap you in the face. Slap you around. <laughs> it worked for your, for your Uncle Neil. <laughs> don't you find this weird how neil neil connor like have you guys ever seen operation 007 he was oh, supposed yeah. to have his he was supposed to have his he was supposed to have his he was supposed, they were supposed to do he was supposed to do AD, like adr yeah and he, had, and he couldn't and come he had back appendicitis. The infection. yeah <laughs> he had appendicitis and he had so they had some other guy dub over for him but I he think did the get to I play love... the character a second time, though. He was like in some other like international like Filipino action film, yeah, playing like and, and he's so... yeah, yeah, Good brother. <laughs> um, he would take off of uh, uh, Pussy Galore's Flying Circus in that movie too. Yes, oh, he's like a big yeah. action number. And I love it, Mister Science <laughs> Theater, when they had this big production number, and then and then they cut to the party, and the guys looking, and they go. The uh, hell? Remember that? Yes. Yeah. It's, it's, <laughs> it's even seven. longer if you watch the uncut version where you're like, yeah, there's a reason they cut away from this. This is not everything. Okay. Why are you dressed as a space angel? Um, <laughs> <laughs> oh, Bobby Gentry, good to see you here. And <laughs> the fact that there's apparently, if you watch it uncut, there is more like just how he gets to stealth attack people with arrows and <laughs> a bow and arrow. <laughs> I know. Did Piper... I know. Yeah, I love that thing with Joel that he does too. <laughs> when people I are stating the obvious, he'll, he'll do that or he'll do his take on Roadhouse where he's like, I like you. That's why I'm going to kill you last. <laughs> you know, which That's is also Commando. a Commando reference. There's yeah. something they I would pay to see Commando too. It oh. might suck, but I would watch it. Just like have Arnold versus the world. Just. <laughs> Totally. Yeah. Bennett, Bennett is no, absolutely a Monty Python. I always wondered if Monty Python's Flying Circus was derived from Pussy Galore's Flying Circus. I, or is I, that a common British thing? I don't know. Yeah. That's a good a question. Flying circus circus was, was, I think they just threw some words together that sounded, you know, funny or interesting. Yeah. Well, Philip, no, the fl- Flying Philip Circus actually dead. comes from like the nineteen, like the like the the barnstorming days where. Oh, you know, yeah. guys would fly around and whatnot, you know. <laughs> so it goes back further than the movie. Bloody hell, it's a yeah. flying circus. <laughs> yeah. I'm sorry, Mark. We're so distracted by the awesome practical effects in the background. I, <laughs> I know. Seen this movie in a minute. Oh. Yeah. It's, it gets washed out a lot, but it's it, there's enough cool stuff up back there. Oh, I'm it's, just glad it's, Amazon it's, it's, has the whole library, so you can put all of them on any day. You don't have to wait for them to be streaming. <laughs> Are they for sale or just for streaming? If you're an streaming, Amazon you, if you if you're a Prime member, yeah, then they should all be free. Yep, because they oh, they own really? the whole MGM library now. HBO yeah. Max had them for a while too, I think. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yes. 
I was going to mention something to you, Cam, Cam, because you mentioned uh, comic books for James Bond. Yeah, I was looking up. There's a lot, uh, but uh, well, you might I mean, uh, have you read any of those, Philip? I have oh. um, a few, but yeah, I would like to be some more recent old. ones. They've been trying out. Sorry, with I don't know if I cut off something. But... I I just looked to see what I had in my library of books, and I have two mini series: one from '89 and one from '92. Uh, James Bond: Permission to Die, and yeah, I yeah. Think it's they written and illustrated by Mike Grell. Around the same time, they were doing like novelizations of graphic novelizations of the movies. It, it's interesting how they would play around with that a bit. And for some reason, Bond fans don't seem to talk about that <laughs> that much. Uh, I, I know they're more often keeping up with the newer books and movies. So it's, but mm -hmm. I'm gonna hunt them down. <laughs> yeah, the mission to retreat. Some of them are kind of cool. You know, different takes on the books as a relief original stories as well yeah because and it's hard to do i get it you know because sometimes the scripters are not in the same production studio as the artists so sometimes it can be a little awkward putting that text box in there <laughs> and then the last one i had was uh james bond 007 serpent's tooth which was published by dark horse yes oh, that's really? right yeah dark horse had the license for a while and uh I, I, Wikipedia has an incomplete list, it seems, so I've, I've been hunting down some more complete ones. I know, and don't worry about any of our hot takes tonight. I know some of the more recent authors have even more hot takes than us <laughs> on the franchise. <laughs> so. <laughs> I always get a kick out of people that say, like, something in Marvel or something. It's not canon, it's fiction. It's fiction. It's all, Get over it's it. all fiction. There's no such thing as canon when it's not. It's a real canon thing. until they make it non-canon again. You know, it, it, we don't adapt to their reference. You know, it's just take well, it and, easy. You know, <laughs> and, and we've been talking all about all these other shared universes that they did. I mean, if you want, I can talk to you, Philip. I'm sure everyone else is sick of this, but I've talked to them to death about the whole Valverde, Waylon Yatundi universe with Alien and. Die Hard and Blade Runner, as well as the St. Elsewhere Law and Order verse. It's like all those. I mean, X Files is part of the St. Elsewhere verse. So there you go. Thank you, Detective yeah. John Munch. But yeah, just, everybody <laughs> seems to want. Um, and they did that without asking for the studio's permission. But yes, to Mike's point, it, it does seem like everyone wants to say, hey, this canon didn't exist. Or is like, how, whatever happened to just, I. I lost track of it after that, you know, or I stopped watching after that. It doesn't have to be this violent, oh, you're not a fan if you like that era. You know, I see people do it even with it's something even more campy. Like, we've seen it with Mystery Science Theater people where they're like, hey, uh, that, that, that era is not funny. We've seen it with even Transformers where it's like, oh, Lord, <laughs> as long as it got you into the animation, who cares? It's a fun MS toy commercial. I, MS33K, I'm always fascinated, no matter who it is, what, what they're going to do with the movie. There's How that. We, we, uh, That's James, the show. That's the show. You know, James Gill, Tom they, and they, I. They've done it well for 13 seasons. You know, absolutely. The, the others and I here even talked about how toxic the Doctor Who fans are. I, I've had to unfriend mm -hmm. a lot of Hellraiser fans who are like crazy violent. It's like whatever happened to agree to disagree? My God, <laughs> if you, I didn't say you had to like this one, but don't tell me I I don't know anything. It's like you haven't read the Clyde Barker books either, so come on, dude. It, you know, it's almost like the people who pretend to watch the Shawshank Redemption or Godfather. This is like, okay, I, are you doing it just to be cool? It, no one said you had to watch a movie that's a nine out of ten on IMDb. You know, it's, if you don't like it or you do like it, that that's fine. But good lord, I mean, I I, I don't see. It's like they want to be the cool guy in school, but then it's just mixed in with all this other toxicity. So yeah, it's not like, like your parents are splitting up or something, you know. It's oh like, my word, yeah. You know? <laughs> <laughs> I remember with oh, Springsteen fans too when he got the other band, and I love that band. It's like it's not that important. That, that's put on true. Show, put on show, you know? My my dad was that way with the Doobie Brothers, where he really dug <laughs> Michael McDonald, and his friends were like, "I hate this new version of the band," and he's like, "Really?" And so it, you know, I, I feel like a lot of people just want tension. I mean, I'm seeing Star Wars fans do it now, where they're like, "Oh, these shows were a mistake." I'm like, "Oh my word!" <laughs> what, 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 one thing what, about... what makes that happen is it's not as fresh the second time around. It's never as fresh. So that's yeah. the other thing they they hate when something's different. It's like, well, yeah. 
that doesn't necessarily mean it's bad yet. But sorry, you were going to yeah. say something, Philip. Oh, yeah. Well, just one thing I do like about the Bond community and as it's made me, you know, enjoy the films even more and get more involved is that, you know, at least on Twitter, um, they're much more kind to like people who have different views on the series than, you know, like you mentioned, Star Wars or something like that. Like with they the don't Last need each Jedi. other alive. They're at least more. Hey, I love this era. I hold it in my heart versus. Yeah. Well, oh, yeah. even like my least. So I, I'll give you like my ranking of the Bond actors. I'd put like Daniel, then George, then Timothy, Sean, Pierce, then Rogers. That's how I would do it. But there you go. Um, I would still even say I love Daniel Craig, even though I ranked him. It's not like I think he's weak as a Bond actor. Maybe he's just the least strong for me. But he's um, a good actor. Yeah, yeah. he's, he's with... kind of like the rough cut. Bond. Remember his line yeah. in Munich: "Don't fuck with the Jews." Yeah, he's very great in that. Um, but it just, even if we have differences within the Bond community, it's just kind of very civil and just like, well, well at the end of the day, I still love this version of Bond, even if it's not like I, I, the short version. I can go. Uh, On occasion, whereas with the Star Wars had... fans, they're crazy. <laughs> so. Star Wars guys are playing crazy. Yeah. It's like they live in it. A... Some of them are just so under a rock. They're like, what? what? I didn't know stormtroopers were supposed to be Nazis. I'm like, okay, <laughs> you really are asleep at the wheel. But I, yeah. Every once in a while, on rare occasions, I will see people who violently hate Brosnan or Craig, but I've even, on occasion, I don't know if it's just because of these comments we've been making fun of, but every once in a while I'll see people say, oh, Connery, he's old, he's overrated. I'm like, well, of course he's old. <laughs> well, I was saying earlier I wasn't a big Brosnan fan, but I'm sure if I sit down and watch those movies... No, no, I'm not, I'm not talking about your yeah. points, but like these know, guys like violently hated him. Like They right. just hated his guts, hated every movie he was in. I'm like, good lord, what did this dude do to you? <laughs> I did the mother, that's what I did. He liked to rank. We always like to, people like to oh, rank. Oh, rankings are fun, but uh, yeah. I, I have had it before. Night, yeah. I will say, some of the last Bond uh specials i did on this show were actually way more chaotic to where i had to actually kind of be referee and say okay guys oh, really? calm down i he, he didn't say you had to like it God. right some yeah people take it so seriously some people like, have like <laughs> diamonds are forever as their favorite bond film and i'm like oh it's not mine but that's cool i can see why you like it so much you know right. that's kind of the general approach i know there's some haters in every fandom but i think James Bond fandom tends to be more civil than the others. It, it is typically more civil. It's really yes. only on occasion where I have to tell some of the guys, like, okay, well, you've only seen this era, so of course that's your favorite. <laughs> right. It's like Beatles albums. Nobody, you know. Oh, Lord. <laughs> Rubber, Stars and Pepper. No, Revolver. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> the White Album. Yeah. It's, <laughs> yes. That's the one that sounds to me like it was recorded three weeks ago. It's still the freshest in my mind, you know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. The whole is greater than the sum of its parts, but <laughs> it may be my favorite album by anybody ever. So there you go. Yeah. There, I, I put That's that out there. Yeah. There you go. Do you have anything you would like to promote, Phil? Before we take off? Uh, no, I, my friend and I are going to start a new podcast he's he's an archaeologist and so we were thinking of oh. starting off with some indiana jones stuff and then there you go you know just doing a variety of things but Jeffrey's in the bond verse too <laughs> yes yes um but we haven't gotten it started yet so um when that happens it'll be advertised on twitter stuff but uh greatly appreciate you guys inviting me on and hanging out a long time coming <laughs> yeah, yeah I, I always enjoy uh talking about 007 so Thank you. Boom, boom, boom. It's a view to a kill background there too. Yeah. Uh, yes. All, nice. all, we we talked a lot about the music. Okay, so one exception, Tom. Check out Sean Callery. He's the guy who composed the Nikita TV show from the nineties and twenty four. Look mm -hmm. up his cover of the Bond theme. I will. Sean Callery, James Bond. I think you got you guys are gonna. One thing he does is a little rock instrumentals mixed in with piano. Uh, I, I think you're gonna like how it's a little more mysterious and playful. In fact, I'll link it. What am I doing? <laughs> yes. Always a delightful time here, gents. I'll get, I'll get it. Keep it rolling. <laughs> Keep it rolling. Yeah. <laughs> uh, that's perfect. We actually ended on where the end credits Right on time. <laughs> perfect. <laughs> perfect. perfect. <laughs>
The podcast is available on Podbean, Spotify, iHeartRadio, Anchor, Apple, and anywhere else podcasts are available. Feel free to review our show and leave comments on any of those sites. Thanks a million for listening. It's a jacked up.